Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week for the NECC and Rocket League. My name is Bass from the Past, and a couple of you guys here might be a little bit confused on who I am. I'm a new caster here to the Casterverse for the NECC, and I'm very, very excited to present to you guys a couple really good games today. So to give you guys a little bit of background about myself, I've been a caster for a couple of months here. I work with a couple of different organizations, Indie Gaming League, Seasonal Shootout, and I am partnered with Team Vaulted. So uh, please, please go check out all these guys. But for today, stick around. We've got some good games for you guys coming up in just a second. First one of the day here today is going to be Valpo versus uh, Kansas Wesleyan. So uh, two very good teams here today, one of which is going to be one and two going in. So they're going to be uh, trying to get uh, back to a normal or to a even record. Meanwhile, Kansas is at one and zero. They've had to change a couple of games and try to rearrange themselves to get ready for today. Unfortunately, coronavirus has affect us, affected us all. So hopefully they can try and improve the record today, uh, or they will end up going even. So for both teams, this is going to be a big game for them today, but we've also got a couple others for you guys coming up. We've got uh, Central Methodist playing later against North Central, and then at the end of the day, we've got Becker versus Montana. Both Becker and Montana are 3-0, and zero, so please make sure to stick around for that to watch the battle of the undefeated. But we've got uh, but we've got VP versus KW coming up in just a little bit. I'm very excited to present that to you guys. But before we get into that, we've got a couple of partners we would like to thank you guys. Uh, we would like to thank today. So our first partner we'd like to give a shout out to is uh, Helix Esports. Thank you guys for the continued support that they've given to the NEC and ECC behind the scenes, as well as also a shout out to our partner and our linear TV provider ESTV who is now available on Samsung TV Plus, as well as the Roku channel, bringing you guys esports action from around the globe 24-7, so be sure to check them out. And finally, HyperX, some of the best gaming gear is finally coming to the NECC, so please give a shout out and give a hand to all of our partners here today. I am very excited to bring, this, uh, to bring all these games here to you guys today. I'll be uh, solo casting just for this first series, and then afterwards, Jaren Bell is going to be coming back in, and we're going to be casting the rest of these games together. But I am very, very excited for, to bring these games to you guys here today, and hope to have a uh, hope to have a good cast as we uh, continue. Like I mentioned previously, I've been a caster for Rock League for a couple of months here so far, and uh, I've really enjoyed it so far. The reception has been great, and I've really enjoyed everything that I've done. So, as we continue on here today, I'm hoping to see some even more Rocket League or some more good players from Rocket League, and expect the best out of both these teams. I wish all of them luck today, and hope to see great performances all around. So uh, thank you guys again for welcoming me into this uh, into the Casterverse here today, and really do appreciate uh, really do appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity. Shout out to everybody in chat, and I see a couple of the guys coming out from my own chat here. So shout out to Dink. But uh, yeah, very very excited to cast here today, and hope that we have some really good games. Like I mentioned previously, KW uh, Kansas Wesleyan is trying to even out their score line here today. So we're going to see how they're able to respond after not being able to play all of their games fully and i have only the uh, highest expectations for them as well as valpro so we'll see how that ends up going out today and uh just right now waiting on waiting on those getting ready to start so plenty of time here though no no rush whatsoever and we are just excited to see what type of match we're going to get 
And so, like I mentioned previously, also, Jaren's going to be back with us in just a little bit. But uh, for now, I'm going to be solo casting. I've been a solo caster for, for a little bit. Uh, most of the games that I do on uh, IGL or Indie Gaming League, like I mentioned earlier, have been solo cast. So I'm very excited to be, uh, to be able to solo cast here today and hope that I can give you guys the best performance possible for myself. So very, very excited, like I mentioned. Really appreciate the, uh, the opportunity here. And uh, we're just going to be waiting on these teams getting ready today. I hope that they're all very prepared for what's about to happen. And I hope that they really do put their best foot forward. Like I mentioned previously, this is a big game for both of them. Either Valpo can go uh, two and two and even out their scoreline, or Kansas Wesleyan can go two and zero and really help their scoreline here and really help their chances throughout the season. So to both of them, I wish them good luck and hope that they have a great day and a great performance out here. And similarly to all the teams coming up, North Central, Cent uh, Central Methodist, Becker, and Montana, all of them, I wish them good luck today in their uh, respective games and hope that all goes well. So um, besides that, I think that there's not, there's not much else to, uh, in, to, what's it called, to explain for myself or intro you guys and explain, but we will see. So just, so we are... So to sort of give you guys, I guess, a little bit more of a uh, background about me and my Rocket League career, I guess some of you guys are probably wondering what rank I've been get, uh, gotten to. So to sort of throw all of you guys for a loop, I'm a little bit different than the average Rocket League player. I actually got into Rocket League through Rumble. So I initially got in through the extra game modes, and that's how all of my friends kind of got me into it and got me excited about the games. And as I slowly progressed, it ended up being my main mode. I just got to GC last season, so that was my first season there and was able to finally get a title for myself. Uh, and as I play the, and as I play in this season, I'm attempting to try and get myself up into the top 100. I've got a partner and a teammate for uh, for Indie Gaming League that is also in the top 100 or just dropped out. So I'm excited to see how we all play together. But like I mentioned, very very excited to uh to try and see what games we have here today because threes as well is definitely an interest in my mind. Just now starting to play threes, so we're gonna see how it uh. How it does for me this season, but uh, definitely excited to see the threes that we've got here today. Both these teams very highly rated and very highly respected. So I have a feeling that we're going to see some very high octane action, no matter who it is. And like I mentioned, we're uh, just waiting on the two teams now. So we're taking a little bit of time, make sure to get you guys some water, make sure to get get yourself a snack, and get prepared for the games that we've got coming up. Because like I mentioned, we've got back to back to back three games in a row between all six very good teams. So we'll see how this one comes through here as we're just now about to start in a couple of couple of minutes here, looking as we're waiting for all the uh, players to hop in the lobby. And it looks like they're all just about in now. So in just a little bit, we're going to be ready to go. Like I said, guys, very, very excited to see how, uh, how these two teams perform and very excited to be here for my very first cast. I appreciate you guys letting me in here today. I am very, very excited to see as both of these teams now are joining up and getting ready for the very first of a best of five series. And here we go. Immediately kickoff going a little bit out to everybody off of uh, everybody off of Valpo, but immediately bounced out to the other side. Kansas Wesleyan trying to run with this one. And Golden looks like he's going to start this one off strong. KWU already. Kansas Wesleyan immediately coming out with a good play. Diversity popping this one off the ceiling. It's a great read from Golan to bang this into the right side. And Stairs, unfortunately, just on the wrong half of the goal there. Not enough time for him to save it. Kansas Wesleyan off to a good start here. And hopefully they can try and continue this momentum as they play throughout the series. Strong start here is always a benefit, no matter which team you're on. Having any sort of momentum for yourself and just keeping that confidence for yourself is going to be key throughout a series like this. As we get on to the... Ooh, I was going to say, as we get onto the Valpo half, again, this is looking threatening. Golden trying to take this one by himself, but can't quite do it. But now Diversity's back in the middle with this one. Golden's got another shot, and somehow Diversity comes away with a goal here. Let's watch this one back. Not exactly sure how Diversity came away with a goal here. It was a great pass out to the center, and Golden's got the shot. Oh, and he just barely deflects it off the top of Diversity. Immediately, a fantastic goal to come out, or I should say two fantastic goals to come out from KWU. And now Valpo trying to reassess themselves. They kind of got to go back to the drawing board here. Although we're only 30 seconds in, it's clear that something's going on with their defense where they've had two, not open nets, but near unsavable shots. They've got to be careful here and keep their defensive posture. 
very, very uh, clever. Otherwise, they're going to have some issues as they go through the series. Another miss coming out, two in a row. And KWU, Golden, going to pick up another one for himself here. And oh boy, BP really having some issues on defense right here. Unfortunately, just a one missed touch is going to lead to a trickle down effect. And unfortunately, KWU just coming through with a bulldozer of a start. Right now, for Valpo, they got to rethink themselves, re -go, go back to the drawing board, and maybe just try to play the next, the rest of this game just defensively, I would say. The best, oh, is to play a little bit hesitantly, but maybe not. Cola Rocks is going to immediately, or Cole Rocks, excuse me, is going to immediately take this one off a of kickoff and bang this one through. Double commit coming through, but no one's home for KW. So, unfortunately, that's going to be a 3-1 to one score line. All of that momentum now a little bit halted. This time, though, kickoff going for KW. Can they get to this one? No. Instead, it's going to be popped out to the side by Gun. Cole going to bang this one back out to the other side. And we got a little bit of ping pong going back and forth. But Golden's going to try and slow it down and possess. Can't quite possess it, though, and has to make a panic touch to pop this out to the side. So instead, Stairs is going to be all over this one. And Goon again. Oh, almost letting a goal back in for his team. Again, I mentioned how much defense needs to tighten up here, unfortunately. Oh, for VP, they've had some issues. Valpo has had a little bit of a defensive mishap so far. Meanwhile, everybody off of KWU have at least, for the most part, been able to stay on their own half effectively and at least control the ball and possess it. You see the flick coming out here near, near midfield, and that's more what you need to see, especially out of everybody off of Valpo. Otherwise, they're going to have a little bit of issue against a team that's so good at suffocating them in their defense. Speaking of which, I hate stairs. Has to get this one out of his half effectively, but that he will. Tries to carry this around the side. As this one goes high, is anyone home? No, Cole can't get to this before diversity. Goon 19 is going to be there, and he's going to at least wait on this ball. He's actually not going to die for it. Instead, he's going to let Golden take a shot. Diversity is going to have one of his own, and unfortunately, Stairs' his save there is just not quite enough. And that little bit of hesitation on the side there led to a great offense for Golden, who's going to be able to get that double touch and leave it in the middle for his teammate. Perfectly banging this one through, and we are back to another three-goal lead for KWU. About three minutes left here now, so plenty of time for either team to try and uh, cement some more goals here, either to increase the lead for KWU or maybe get a comeback here for VP. VP have not done a terrible time, uh, have not, excuse me, done a terrible job so far of making their offense known, but I said, like I've mentioned, their defense is definitely, ooh, been their uh, struggling point so far. A shot ripped off by Cole there, but the save coming out for everybody off KWU yet again. And now you see how all three players are sort of in a scramble to get back to their own half. This is what I mentioned when I say that there needs to be a little bit of more of a defensive posture for K, uh, for VP as they go into the next game. I don't think that this game is all but over yet, not at all or anywhere close. But they need to be careful. And considering how lethal the offense has been so far for KWU, they really need to be careful as they continue through this series. But with two minutes left here, still plenty of time to try and rewrite this scoreline. Look, KWU looking like they're going to ooh, try to go for another goal, but the miss coming out there. Golden's got to be the last one back, and he's got a panic touch to get this out of his own half. Oh, but he's going to be there on the other side as well. Golden giving a free shot on the middle, and he's going to bang this one through. It's a nice first touch from him to just try and get this out of there. Brodo wanted the pass out to the middle, but without it coming through, Golden just says, I'll take this myself, and bangs it off the ground into the top left corner. A perfect shot for him, and the, incre and the lead is increased here now with about two minutes left. 5-1, to one, a four-goal lead here for KWU, and they've done a good job so far. Wesley and definitely showing what type of team they're going to be here in the rest of this game and that they are not to be trifled with. But like I mentioned previously, for VP, I think they've had a good offense so far, but for the most part, they need to be focused on their defense. If their defense is not completely solid, they're going to be scored against uh, by an incredibly efficient offense. As this one goes off the top of diversity, he's still not going to be done with the play. Rodell pops this one high. Cole's going to be there for the clear, but it's not going to be a powerful enough one as the double commit comes out. And now, maybe an opportunity for VP or for KWU to get yet another goal here. Pops this one high over stairs, and Cole can't get to this. Rodell going to take a goal of his own here now. And now it looks like, I believe, everybody off of uh, everybody off of KWU have at least one goal apiece now, spreading the love all around here. And it's a nice dribble play to give Rodell his first. 115 left here now, and this is a, I wouldn't say a uh, blowout necessarily, but this is definitely a game where you need to go back to the drawing board for VP. They have not necessarily played bad, not even close to bad at all here. They played well, but their defense has just left a couple of gaps, and KWU, too lethal of a team for you to be able to do that and not get punished. 
So as we get into the last minute here, like I mentioned, I think there's a couple of little adjustments that need to be made here. And Golden, I don't know if there's any that he needs to make. Chat saying Golden's on fire. Indeed he is. He is popping off with a great read off this backboard in the Brazil coming on out here before even the last 30 seconds. So like I said, an impressive performance KWU. And for many of the things that we need to see as an improvement for VP here, break down to their defense where they need to sort of posture themselves a little bit differently. Notice how Stairs is pulling himself out of the goal there. Takes a second for Gun to get back there, but it's a little bit of a little bit of a miscommunication there that I think is going to lead them into a what could be treacherous series the rest of the way out. But it's a best of five. They've got plenty of time to try and readjust here. And I think that's the biggest thing they need to do coming, excuse me, coming out of this game. Try to go back to the drawing board. Just sort of take this one as a wipe. Say, hey, we didn't play good the first game. That doesn't mean we're not going to play well the rest of the series. Try to just shake this off. The nerves may be here. You're on stream and you're ready to play against a very good team. So the more you get confidence in yourself and the more you play, the better you will become as a unit. And right now, that's the biggest thing for VP is trying to play with confidence and playing with a good posture on their defense for sure. Just about 10 seconds left now here. And I think this is about all she wrote. Maybe a goal going to either side, but the victor already determined here. Kansas Wesleyan University coming out here with a strong first performance in this game. And they're going to take the first game 7-1 to one with the Brazil. Like I mentioned, a very, very impressive performance for Golden here. 981 points for him. Uh, 981 points for him. He's got four goals, two assists, three saves, and six shots. A very, very impressive performance for him uh, so far. And uh, everybody off of VP, not while well, not playing bad, not playing bad at all here, like I said, need to focus on their defense. Biggest thing for them is that for many of the shots that we're taking from everybody off of uh, Kansas Wesleyan, they were completely all over them and not really allowing them to do much. There's a couple of shots, or do much on defense, excuse me. You see that there's four saves forced out of everybody off of, uh, off of uh, VP, but unfortunately for uh, KWU, they only had three saves as well. So the save total, not very different. But when you look at the shot total, 12 shots to four, you can really tell who had the more efficient offense and who was continuing their offense as it went through. So like I mentioned, this is definitely going to be a uh, this is going to be a series where I think the defense needs to step up a little bit for VP and their offense needs to be a little bit more efficient. While not playing badly on offense, I think that they kind of just need to not necessarily rewrite as much as just sort of try try some new things, try some more experimental things, try some more some more out there things because for the most part it didn't seem to frazzle much of the defense of uh, Kansas Wesleyan University. So we'll see how that one goes as we get into the second game here. KWU going to try to continue their momentum in this game, and I would say getting a goal here early is going to be huge for that. If they can try and continue this momentum, ooh, they're going to be able to play a good game. Diversity wants the first shot of the match. Goes a little bit wide here, so Golden's going to take it to the air himself. He's got a little boost, but just cannot quite get to that one. And now I he stairs is going to travel with this one the other way. Maybe not. Diversity cutting in here. Now he's got a 1v1. No, not going to win it. Yoon going to be able to take a touch here and pop it out. Not for long, though. Golden back to the air here. He's bumped midair, though, and not going to be able to get the double touch. And Yoon's going to make this block on diversity. Finally, now we see a little bit of an offense here for Valpo. Let's see what happens. Not much. Cole Rock's not going to have a confident enough touch here at the midfield, and Golden's going to take that away from him. Now stairs on the back wall. Has to make a good touch. Not perfect, though, unfortunately. And it looks like it's going to be a shot. Diversity, though, blocked by a heat stairs. And this is what I was mentioning when I said that the defense needed to improve a little bit. You see how the plethora of saves are coming out for everybody off of Valpro, but unfortunately, they're just not quite able to convert out of their own half. You've got so many players on KWU that are playing confidently and waiting at the half to just keep possession here. And unfortunately, that's just such an effective strategy that for everybody off of VP, they can't get out of their own half cleanly and turn it into an efficient offense. So as it stands right now, still looking like the... Oh, the momentum's on KWU's side! And a miss coming out in front of the goal here... But somehow Cole is going to be able to take this the other way. The 50 coming out, and this could be a goal. No! Dune can't quite get this one on target, and neither can the next one. Two shots coming out in a row for everybody off of VP, and they just cannot sink this. The back of the net never found here. Uh-oh, and this one might. No, Golden again, another miss. Right now, both teams having a little bit of difficulty with the uh, accuracy. The explosiveness is all of a all of a sudden turned up to 10 here. Uh-oh, and this one, is it going to drop on in? No, it will not. Cole just stares at this one as it goes by the goal here. And you can see that the boost starvation is really starting to come out here. Diversity tries to go for this one, but not going to be able to. So Golden's got to make a dive. Doing the last one back here with 11 boosts, he needs a powerful touch, and that he will not get. 
Back to the midfield it goes yet again. Diversity. Gonna miss this one, though. Golden's got a shot on net. Is the bump coming out? Indeed it is! Saw the bump coming from Diversity a little bit early, but unfortunately, as a result, he's actually in the way of that one. A good bump out of him, but still... Oh, I was gonna say, Kansas Wesleyan knocking on the door of a goal here, and finally, after about a, 2 minutes and 20 seconds, they've gotten their first goal through. It's a nice aerial play out of Golden here. Just pops it over the last two defenders and right on in. And again, Golden, another offensive force in this game. He's already got six shots. Not as high of a shot percentage as last game, but just as deadly on offense and just as much of a force and pressure to everybody off of Valpo. And now as this one goes back out to the middle, Stairs and Gune in awkward positions. Now finally, Brodo's going to take a shot of his own, and the save coming out. VP with great defense here in this game. They've done a good job of at least holding off most of these shots. But again, I mentioned their transition defense is the stuff that worries me the most. You see these touches come out to make these saves, but unfortunately they're not doing much with them to follow up. Now as Brodo pops this one out, we get the first confident touch onto the other half by Goon, but there's already someone back. Golden in the perfect right position here. Can't get the follow-up touch, though. And now you've got the double commit out of VP, though. Notice how you've got two people going out to the midfield there. Goon, the last one back, has to make a desperation touch. Now Brodo gonna shoot this one. And you see how the defense started to just break down a little bit there, and that was all that KWU needed there. Wesley and doing a good job so far of making sure that every little mistake on defense is completely capitalized. One single double commit is all that it takes for them to just start swarming like sharks. Ooh, and a great shot coming out of Golden yet again. Seven shots for him now. And when I say he's been an offensive force, not only this game, but the last game, I have a feeling it's going to continue throughout this series. A real offensive force for everybody off of Kansas Wesleyan. And they got to try to uh, not rely on him, but give the ball to him as much as they can. If you're feeling hot like he is right now, there's no reason not to let him just take shot after shot here. As we get down to just about the last minute mark here, it's looking like VP's got to get at least one in. Brodell with a great save. Saw diversity in an awkward position there, and he's perfectly going to take that one away here. Give his team some time to gather some boost and get ready for their defense all over again, and that they will. Finally, the transition comes out, and this should be a goal. Gune, unfortunately, just a little too far out, and Golden, when he's hot, he's hot. Bangs this one through with a perfect shot. You see Gune is the last one back there. Unfortunately, he's up at the midfield there, and he's got to be careful. One pops ball like that over his head, and you've got a great opportunity for everybody off of KWU. And that it was. A minute left now here. And well, not impossible for everybody off of Valpo to try and bring this one back. Unfortunately, this is going to be a hard one for them. They've played against a team which has not only had an incredibly efficient offense, but their defense has done well as well. So far, we've actually had a plethora of saves out of them. Two saves to everyone off of KWU. And that's saying something for the little amount of shots that have come out. Three shots for everybody off of VP here. That means that they've uh, saved two-thirds of those shots. Meanwhile, in the other half of the field, you've got six saves coming out of VP to the, I believe it is now, yeah, 12 shots yet again out of everybody off of Kansas Wesleyan University. So with 20 seconds left now here, like I mentioned, I don't know if it's going to be easy to break down through this, de uh, this defense out of Kansas Wesleyan. Oh, especially not if another goal comes through. Brodo trying to grab that one in the midfield. Can't quite get the shot on, but it's not going to make much of a difference here as we get down to the last couple seconds. 2-0 to zero, looking like the scoreline, and at minimum, Kansas Wesleyan University going to take this second game again, and 2-0 to zero now, they lead this series. Impressive performance out of everybody all around, but definitely something that uh, definitely Golden needs to be suppressed in this next game if you're going to try and go for the goal here for everybody off of VP. They did a good job of playing that game a little bit more defensively, but still at that, their transitional defense was the biggest part of holding them back. You notice many of the saves that they did make, while they weren't bad saves, they didn't really lead to much. Unfortunately, when you have a save that just kind of dribbles in front of your net, it's more of a calling card to the other team to jump on it immediately and continue that pressure. So for everybody off Kansas Wesleyan University, keep doing what you're doing on offense. But for everybody off of VP here, they need to focus on bashing this one out of their half as efficiently as possible, or at least getting it to a space where another one of their players can run with it. As it stands right now, definitely, definitely in the favor of Kansas Wesleyan. All the momentum has been on their side since that 7-1 start here. And despite only getting a 2-0 victory here in this one, still another impressive performance, especially from Golden. Two goals, one save, and eight shots. The man has been an absolute powerhouse on offense here. And I don't expect that to stop here in this final game. So as we get underway here, I'm excited to see what sort of, uh, sort of mix-ups that everybody off of, uh, off of VP have here. We'll see what happens.
And as we get underway, like I mentioned, the biggest thing I want to see improvement wise, I need VP and I need everybody there to work on their defense. For everybody out of Kansas, uh, Kansas Wesleyan University, I think they just kind of got to play the same game. So far, you've had an effective strategy that has worked well thus far. No reason to go back in the drawing board if there's uh, there's no markups to be made. Rodell jumps on this one immediately. A good 50 out of him, and maybe now we've got an opportunity. KWU, though, they've going to... Oh, I was going to say, they have to take advantage of that. You see another double commit come out of the corner there for VP. They need to be careful. Their positioning has been so worrisome this entire game, and you cannot afford to go back to the same double commit issues that you had the first game when you're looking at a sweep. They're fighting for their uh, they're fighting for their lives here, more or less. This is the series on the line here for everybody off of VP. KWU here... Just trying to get another victory here. They can afford to lose this one. Not that I think that they should try and lose this one, but they can afford to lose this game and go back to the drawing board for the fourth and fifth game if need be. But I think they'd much rather just end this right here, right now. Golden tries to get a touch here. That he will. Now, no double touch to be found, but Brodo will be in the middle to try and continue this offense. Cole with a good touch, but it's not going to be enough as diversity is up and ready. He's going to rip off a shot of his own, and he's going to slot it on in into the bottom left. Diversity with a great heads up play here. Realizes this one. He's got one beat. Stairs is there. If he just slots this in against the oncoming defender, he's got a great shot there. And that he does. Diversity with a great start for his team. And Kansas Wesleyan back up 1-0 to zero now. Four minutes left in this game. So not impossible for VP to come back here. But giving any sort of momentum to KWU here is probably the last thing that you want to do. Cole Rocks now. And try to take this one off the corner. Maybe he can get some sort of goal started here. No, unfortunately not. This one taken away. Brodo got the follow-up. And you notice how you have one player attacking there. Diversity doing a good job of immediately going on it. But after that, uh, after the attack is all but done, or I should say defense is all but done, immediately you've got Brodo following it up. And this is what we've been lacking out of everybody off of VP here. You have one touch to clear it that comes out. And unfortunately, this is really not going to be enough for a team like uh, KWU who have done such a good job of, oh, I was going to say suppressing the offense off of VP. A little bit of a miss in front of the goal there now. And maybe a little bit of momentum. No, instead not. Brodo with a good clear out and a good 50 to follow up. Golden's behind him. And you don't want Golden in the air here. It's the last place you want to see him flying. And as it's thwarted away from him, maybe now an opportunity for VP as they finally get into the half of KWU. Can they continue this, though? No, Golden backs this off the backboard. Brodell's up, but misses this one. And now VP have an opportunity here. Diversity going to jump on this one early, though, to try and stuff it the best he can. And as the demo comes out from uh, on I Hate Stairs, or excuse me, on Golden from I Hate Stairs, the offense will continue for VP. This is the best we've seen them so far when it comes to their offense. Can they continue it? No! Golden gonna be the Golden God yet again here. Brings it around one and starts the offense all over again for KWU here, who again continue to just impress when it comes to their apps, uh, when it comes to their transitional defense and uh, positioning. They've done such a good job of the minute that they have an opportunity to get out of their own half, they jump on it every single time they've been able to do this here. Hopefully they can, well actually I don't, I wouldn't say hopefully they can hold off here. I'd love to be honest, I'd love to see this series continue here, see if VP can get some spark in them. But as it stands right now with a 1-0 lead in what has been such a close series the last two games here, goals have come far and few. The first game, definitely both teams trying to just sort of feel each other out and see how they want to play. Nerves probably at, at uh, what, is it, what is it, uh, at play, excuse me, both teams here. And now as we've ooh, gotten into the second and third games, this is starting to seem like both these teams have full momentum. A lot closer than it had started off with, but goal is not easy to come by here. So VP need to get this out of their half and get a goal right here, right now. The momentum cannot continue for Kansas Wesleyan, or they're going to end up looking down the barrel of a 3-0 sweep. This goal coming through. Goon with a great save on the line here, but it's not going to be enough. Golden's going to try and continue this offense, and as Brodo goes up the side, Kansas City or Kansas Wesleyan University is not quite done here. KWU doing a good job so far. As this one goes off the ceiling, uh-oh, but Golden's in the middle. Another save coming out of U19 there. Oh, but it's not going to be enough. Diversity going to slot this one in. And I was about to compliment the amount of saves that we've seen out of uh, – had a uh, goon right there, and he's done a great job so far of making sure to hold off all of those. But uh, four saves is going to be the limit there as the two to zero comes through here. And again, another impressive performance out of everybody off of KWU with a minute left here. I'm not going to say this is all she wrote, but this is going to be a hard comeback for VP who have yet to score a goal in the last two games. So getting one here and getting then another afterwards is a big, big challenge for them and a huge hill that they still have to climb. 
as the Versi lets off another shot here. Golden, is he going to go up? That he will, but this one's going to be off. 44 seconds left here, and if another goal comes through, I'm, I hate to say it, but that truly is all she wrote for everybody off of Valpro. And that's going to drop to the middle here. Golden now not going to be able to continue with the offense here. Instead, Diversity is actually going to be at the midfield. Rodell's still in the back half, though, trying to hold down his team's defense. And as he's called off by Golden, he's got a great clear. And this looks like it could be another transition for Golden. Popped high. Stairs has got to make the save, and that he will. This one dropped down. Chair Ooh, Stairs can't get the touch that he's looking for there. And that actually, I think that might just about be it. I was going to say they'll have at least one or two more attacks and maybe give themselves a chance. But as this one is volleyed back onto their side, I think that's about all she wrote. And as this one hits the ground, zero seconds left. Kansas City, or Kansas Wesleyan University, excuse me, have swept their opponents here in an impressive performance of 7-1, to 2-0, to zero, and now possibly 2-0 to zero yet again. This one trying to drop in the corner, not going to be allowed to. Goes high. Uh-oh, is this going to be a 3-0? to zero? Golden tries to carry it, but no, he will not. Regardless, Kansas Wesleyan University, KWU, going to be your victors here for this very first series here in a 3-0 sweep. And we see in this last game a little bit more of a diversity when it comes to everybody taking shots here. But for the most part, we still have to give a shout out to Golden here. But it's such a good job of absolutely suppressing that offense from everybody off of VP and just showing his offensive prowess as well. The guy came through with a plethora of shots, a plethora of goals, and fantastic ones at that. Continue to lead his offense all the way up into the third game where everybody else on his team started to get just as much confident and became just as lethal on offense. So a great performance out of KWU there. Really well played all around. And uh, unfortunately for VP here today, this is not going to be their series. Not a bad performance out of them, but just were not able to come away with a victory there. So well played all around to both teams. But unfortunately, or I guess fortunately for KWU, a fantastic 3-0 to zero sweep in which they have done a very good job of proving how efficient their offense is and how scary they're going to be for the rest of this season. So they go to 2-0 and zero now and continue on throughout their season. So that will be everything for the first series here today. So. Uh, we're going to be back with a couple more series in a little bit. We've got CMU versus uh, Northern Central. So Central Methodist versus Northern Central te uh, Technical College. And then later on, we've got Becker versus Montana, both 3-0 teams. So you got to stick around for that. Before we leave you guys, want to give one more quick shout out to all of our partners here today. First one is going to be Helix Esports. So again, thank you for your continued support for the NECC behind the scenes to make all this possible as well as uh, thank you to our linear TV provider, ESTV, like I mentioned, now available on Samsung TV Plus and the Roku channel. So bringing you esports action from around the globe 24-7. So make sure to go check them out. And finally, HyperX, some of the best gaming gear is coming to the NECC, like I mentioned. So big shout out to all of our partners here today, as well as our uh, commissioner, Jacob Van Rin, for allowing us to be here tonight, and our director of esports, Caleb Gluby. So thank you to everybody involved here for the NECC. That is going to be all for our first series, but don't go anywhere. We've got more series coming up for you guys in just a little bit. Like I mentioned, Central Methodist versus Northern Central. So don't click away. We will be right back.
You know what season it is? Bathing suit season? No, handsome twin season. Handsome twins in bathing suit season. No, moving season. No. More people move now than any other time of the year. Then it's ADT season too. Yes, because people will be replacing their sold signs with ADT signs. And one of the first things you should be doing when moving is protecting your new home. Moving can be hard, but ADT can make it easier. Can ADT help me move this couch? They don't do that. Right, neither do I.
Take me away from home Show me all the places I've never known And we'll chase the night Race all of these broken dreams in flight And we'll fly Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Friday Night Live here at the NECC. I am your host, Jaron Bell, and of course, tonight, for the first time, a new dynamic duo comes alive. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to my main man, Bass from the past, Oliver Bass. What is up, my friend? I'm excited to be here, man. We had a great first series already, a 3-0 sweep, which was a just high-flying octane game the entire time. And now we've got another game coming up for you guys. we got North Central versus Central Methodist, and I'm excited to be here, Jaron. Ahead of time, you got any predictions coming out for the series or anything you'd like to see from these two teams? You know what? For me, it comes out, Central Methodist comes out, you know, dealing, they, they had to deal with some COVID-19 protocol. So now this is their first attempt. So we don't really know what we're going to see from this uh, SMU or CMU team. Uh, and then for North Central Technical College, they're coming 1-0 and with a victory last week. So it's going to be impressive to see because with CMU, we're not sure what we're going to expect. It's going to mm -hmm. be a fantastic matchup for sure. I'm very excited to see both of these teams play, and I'm very excited for the rest of the games we have as well. So don't forget, later tonight after this game, we've also got Becker versus Montana. So after this series, don't forget to stick around because we've got plenty of Rocket League action for all of you guys tonight. And I'm excited to see this series here. Like you mentioned, CMU coming in one or coming in zero and zero. So for their first match, I'm excited to sort of see how they play. We had the team before this. The first match was definitely clearly a little bit of nerves. And then as it continued through, the series got more and more tight. So I'm excited sure. to see if CMU can come out here and really just blow everybody away with their first match. Absolutely. And speaking of blowing people away, we are blown away by the support of our partners. We want to take just a second and say thank you to our friends at Helix Esports for all that they do for us here behind the scenes. And of course, you might even be watching right now, but our linear TV partner, our friends at ESTV, now available on Samsung TV Plus and the Roku channel, bringing you esports action from around the globe 24-7 on their platform. And, of course, our newest partner, the newest member to our family here at the NECC, HyperX, some of the best gear in gaming now available to the NECC. Fantastic things. And, listen, uh, Oliver, look, this is your first time here at the NECC, and, and welcome to the family, man. What do you think about everything we got going on over here? I mean, this is awesome. I've been, like I mentioned in the very first series, I've been uh, not necessarily around the block, but I've been around for a minute now, and I've uh, casted for a couple of different leagues, and I got to say, I'm blown away by how well you guys are organized and handling everything. You guys have got a great league here with a lot of good teams and a lot of good players, uh, some great sponsors willing to help you guys, some great partners that are really great, uh, and I'm grateful to all of them for, you know, allowing me to step in here and be a caster for all you guys, so... Thank you very much for the warm intro. I really do appreciate it. And I'm very excited to see how the uh, the rest of the season unfolds. Like you mentioned uh, earlier, we've got two teams today that are really here to show off what they got, a 1-0 and, and a 0-0. Zero and zero. So a lot on the line for both of these teams here. I would love to show a very strong start for them. So we'll see how this goes. Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, we want to remind you that five days a week, you can catch collegiate esport action right here live at the NECC. On Monday nights, we kick off with Madden Mondays. Some of the best Madden players in college play on Monday nights, sponsored by the NFL Alumni Association. On Tuesdays, myself and Voltage Plays are there for Valorant Live. We take a transition and we go to Wednesday nights for Overwatch Wednesdays. Myself and Connor Breeze bringing you some high-quality Overwatch action. 
And of course, on Thursday nights, if you have not seen what is happening in our League of Legends division, you are missing out. You're going to want to check that out. And then, of course, Friday Night Live, we round the week up. As you can see, we're going to put the cars on the field. We're going to drop the ball in the center, and we're going to have Rocket League Live right here every single Friday night at the NECC. And speaking of Rocket League, Oliver, there's a lot of things happening with the new move um, to the free-to-play mm -hmm. aspect. There's a lot of things. So let's not just talk college for a second. Why don't you give me a rundown on where you think Rocket League is a as a title and, and kind of what's happening within the scene of Rocket League right now as it stands? Absolutely. I mean, I'm very excited for what has just happened. In my opinion, I think Rocket League needed to go free to play long ago, and I'm glad to see that they are now here. They've expanded themselves to an audience which has absolutely blown up. If you guys have not seen the statistics for how well they've done initially, I urge you to go look at the peak. They actually passed CSGO for uh, their congruent players at one time at over 7, or excuse me, 1.7 million players playing at once, online all at once. So really an impressive stat there. I think it's been a great transition. I think Epic's done a good job so far of making sure to expand this player base as much as possible and introducing a lot of people to Rock League. And I encourage you guys to go check out all of the Rock League creators that are out there, all the streamers, the YouTube uh, YouTubers, all these people who have been around the community for a long time as they are now really getting their... Uh, their fair share of the fame here as all of them are blowing up on YouTube and Twitch and et cetera. And I think it's really been a healthy start for the Rocket League community as they've transitioned into the, uh, into the Epic Games corner. And I think it's been really impressive so far how well they've handled everything. The servers have gotten better. Uh, the tournaments revamped is awesome. I love the new mode in which, you got, uh, in which they have tournaments every three hours. I mean, I'm very, very excited. We're gonna jump so right into action. We're gonna jump right into action. It is not on our screen here. Uh, we were not aware of that transition. We were not told. We apologize. But it looks like a one goal advantage right now for in. In the first five seconds off the kickoff, we are not in. We need to make sure that we can get in there. We're watching it now. Uh, while he gets that gets that logged in, I will guide you through here till we get in the lobby. Uh, our producer may, maybe can help us get in that lobby. Uh, let's see. It looks like Cobol. Looks like Cobra inside. They're gonna take a shot. No, it is saved. <clears throat> ball on the NTC side of the field. Lightning. Sergeant Dilmac takes the ball in. Not in. And a goal by Sergeant Dilmac. A two goal advantage for NTC out of the gate. It is 2 0 for NTC. TC Northern Technical College coming out of Wisconsin. Fantastic. Now a very quick start for them, immediately giving themselves the advantage here. Two to zero to start off. So with already with only a minute in uh with only a minute into this game, you gotta wonder, is the momentum gonna start to shift their way? We saw this the last series, a seven to one start for the team that came out on top initially and had the first goal. So you got to hope in this game that there's a little bit more of a close game between the two of them. But if it continues like this, we should see a plethora of goals coming out of NTC. And, ooh, almost one there. The save coming out from NG America there in the center. But you can already see the shots are starting to volley here and a plethora of them coming out already. Absolutely. And this ball, and, and if you're CMU wearing those green, green, green skins, you got to get a shot on goal. And we might have something here, Oliver. Oh, possibly. This one dropped down, not quite going through here, but you can see the aerial prowess is absolutely there. These teams are ready to play however they can and take whatever shots they can in order to make it work. A nice redirect out to the middle here. Is this going to turn to something? No, not quite. Lightning not able to convert with this one, but still going to stay on the half of CMU here. This one's popped out to the side. And so far, we're seeing a little bit of explosiveness. Do you think this has to do with the fact that both teams are just starting to get warm here? Or do you think this is more or less how the series is going to be played? Absolutely. We have an open net. Big save right there. But that is one of the things that I've seen, Oliver, is the fact that a lot of these games in this best of five series, they start out slow. You might see a team um, that comes out with a clear cut advantage like we saw in that first match. But then... 
teams pick up. And there is a shot on goal. And just like that, it took some time to warm up. But CMU, that Oliver, that is a massive goal to turn this momentum around. And you got to give a shout out to that demo there in the corner. Everybody getting flustered there off of NTC immediately. A demo coming out from what should have been an easy save. But without a player there, that's no longer easy. That is a panic for everybody. And good way of taking advantage for everybody off of CMU here. As Phantom tries to slot in another one. We're seeing a volley of shots come out from CMU here. It may just be a matter of time before they tie this one up. Absolutely. As the ball is played into their end. But uh -oh. Here's a shot on goal. And just like that that talk about a blast from the past just like the first minute of the game oliver holy moly what a goal unfortunately they just can't quite get around this one in the center and lightning's gonna bang this one through a definitive goal there to make sure that they've got some uh, they got a little bit of a cushion going into the second half of this game and as we drop under two and a half minutes left here now you gotta wonder if uh cmu are gonna be able to try and change the tra uh the what is it the uh, offense here that they've had so far they were able to get one goal in but afterwards all the momentum they have was immediately sucked away by a counter goal so that lead back up to what it was initially so they got to be careful as they continue throughout this game absolutely might have an advantage right here goal, goal shot down and there it is there is the goal and i tell you what one of the things oliver here at the necc you have to love the fight and the action non-stop with phantom catching that pass from the center and putting it in the back of the net three two ntc but cmu uh, oliver looks like they're on the rise absolutely jaron and i think a big thing about that is is you noticed how smart they were with that one well some may see that as a whiff off the backboard i don't think that was at all i believe that was a complete fake to let that one drop through knew that his teammate had a better shot there oh and if your head's up enough to let other people take good shots you're gonna do well as a team shot coming out there from america but it's not quite on target and the 1v1 we go here is now ntc try to counter attack Oh, and that they will. Koi Boy going to actually come through there. You saw the counterattack building, and it was an efficient one at that. And Oliver, one of the things that we have seen every single oh. time this CMU team battles back is a huge goal you see there. Every time they think seem that they can have momentum taking that 2-0 goal, NTC just right there to, to answer. Absolutely. They've done a good job so far of making sure to not let the momentum shift too aggressively. They want to keep themselves in the game. And I think that's a big thing about that, especially in comparison to the series we saw previously to this. Part of it is making sure that you keep your opponents close. If you get yourself out of the game mentally and you just take yourself out and already take that one, uh, take a game off as a loss or as a win, you immediately give your team a disadvantage there. You need to keep yourself at full force at all times. And right now, it definitely looks like both teams are playing at full force and keeping themselves close. Yeah, no no stopping momentum here. As we are not worried about teams warming up, this is a high, mm -hmm. high impact action. Absolutely. Both teams have done a good job of making efficient touches here. As Lightning tries to dribble this one himself, goes high with this one. What can he do? Runs into his teammate in the corner now. A bit of a little bit of chaos out in the corner here. Can NTC try and transition this into a goal? Looks like not. Counterattack coming out. Good flick high. Koi Boy's got to get a good touch here. And that's not going to be enough. Phantom going to be able to bang this one through. Unfortunately, Koi not able to control that one in the air. And look, what a flick to take the touch. Uh, he does get there in the air, but what a... What what movement? I think this is going to be a long match. And with 33 seconds, this is by far not over. Absolutely not. I definitely think that there's a chance we go to overtime here. Uh-oh, but not if Lightning scores this one right here, right oh. now. Back to a two-goal lead, 30 seconds. You think this is possible, Jaren? I mean, listen, just like we st I stated before, how about every single time that CMU mm -hmm. responds with a goal and you think something could happen? NTC right there. Oliver, what impressive play. It's really gone back and forth so far, something we hadn't seen as much the last series, but I agree with you, Jaron. It's been absolutely back and forth the whole time. Both teams look like they could have won this one, and it goes back to what we mentioned previously. It's really the team to kind of come out on top and uh, just get the goals in first and get the efficiency in first. Momentum's a little bit more on your side, and just with a little bit of a cushion there, they were able to get Oh, wait a minute. I was going to say, continue their lead on this game, but maybe CMU just now getting a little bit of momentum on their side here could they maybe get a kickoff goal you, i mean this is going to we are going to see what is about to happen because if they can get a first of all oliver i'm gonna fall out of my chair if they get a goal off of this kickoff let's go <laughs> 
If they get a goal off this kickoff, I'll be more than just impressed. I'll be ecstatic the for the overtime. Oh, almost. Still up in the air, though. What oh, a game. Go ahead, Oliver. Very, very close. I was going to say, you wanted to see it. I think everybody in the audience, and I think you can agree with this one, Jared. You wanted to see that one go to overtime, but just not quite. Absolutely. And if anything, you have got to be excited for what these next couple rounds are going to show you as both teams answered. Look, how many times did we see a two-goal advantage here, Oliver? And now this game ends 5-4 as we get ready for round two. This is going to be an impressive match. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that this is possibly going to go to game five. I mean, we saw a series that immediately came out to an explosive start. Both teams immediately thrown off a volley of shots. And I think something to look forward to in these next two games is I think the defense is also going to improve. A lot of the time, those shots, while not uncontested, they kind of went in through very cleanly, very efficiently. So as the rest of the series goes on, I'd love to see how the defense improves and see what sort of saves we have coming out. Absolutely. And and for me, I think if you're CMU, you have to know, you have to be excited about the fact, I mean, you, you never want to drop around, but how about the fact that you fought back from a two goal deficit twice mm -hmm. and you're able to come back? That's so impressive. I mean, you think if the beginning of that game just went a little bit different, differently, what kind of scoreline would we see at the end there? Just a little bit of uh, an advantage going to everybody off of uh, going to everybody off of CMU, but Unfortunately, that was just uh, that was just the way it went for the rest of that game. Or so uh, as we get into this next one, we're gonna have to see which team comes out on top initially. I have a feeling that we may have the same, uh, we may have a similar uh, similar outcome to the last series. And we have where it's whichever team can do it first. And we have kickoff, and here's a shot on goal. It's blocked off. It looks like yes, NTC will have code, but it's put back in by Phantom. Uh, Oliver, we are right back into action. Let's get it. Already and immediately we've already got shots coming out from both teams as this one goes high. Lightning's got to pop this out to the side, but NG's up and ready for it. Another shot on goal and the save coming out yet again. Sergeant Dilmac doing a good job of pulling this one out and now maybe giving his team an opportunity. You can already see both teams immediately coming into this one with a lot of high octane gameplay. Yes, absolutely. And you're going to have a pop up here off the backboard. Let's see if they can be followed up. Just nobody there popped up to center again. Oliver, tons of pressure right now from CMU. Absolutely, and it looks like both teams are doing a good job of at least playing a little bit more cautiously. Like we mentioned last game, the saves were not necessarily far and few, but they were they were not as common as the plethora of shots we were seeing. So it looks like both teams have tried to slow down a bit and try and focus on possession a little bit more as Lightning pops this one out to the middle. No one home, though, so now maybe a counterattack. No, completely cut off at the midfield there. And NTC have another opportunity here on offense. Absolutely. Ball's going to be played to the center. Here's a follow. Whoa. And it's in. What? Sergeant Dilmack, talk about taking advantage of your squad. Wow, what a play to get up in the air, rotate, and put it in the right corner of the net. Oh my god, and it's pretty much picture perfect there. You see Phantom's in the goal, but he had absolutely no time to be able to get to that one. Just puts it perfectly enough away from him. That's an awkward touch and a good 1-0 start here for NTC now. We're putting on a performance so far here. Very, very impressive from everybody involved. Massive demo right there on goal. Ball played mm -hmm. at the center. Let's see how. Let's see what Lightning does here. Did big standout in that first match. Let's see if he can follow, but the ball cleared away. Yeah, so far I would definitely mention, yeah, Lightning's really been one of the players to watch here in this series. Very explosive all around. Koi Boy, another guy to watch as well. I just want to say, oh, but Lightning going to be the one to take the goal. And as we're giving him praises, you just see why. A massive redirect off the center. And if anything, Lightning there, but what a pass. I'm not sure who made that pass. I didn't get to see that. But massive pass down to his teammate. Two-goal mm -hmm. advantage here for NTC. And this is the way you want to start off for sure. We mentioned previously that uh, momentum is going to be a huge part of this game, as it is every single Rocket League series. And with a two-goal start and only three minutes left now, this is a little bit of a switch up for NTC here. They can focus on their defense even more than they already have. And just focus on, oh, not letting in a goal, though, but this might be it. No, Dilmac going to make a good save here on the side. Impressive stuff so far. Jaren, if you were to call this series right here right now, do you still think that uh, 
you would you give it to NDC or do you think that there's still some fight left in them and the CMU guys that we haven't quite seen yet? I think right now coming back as we have a play into center here, almost a goal there. No, I don't think you can say this match is. I don't think this is anything even over. close to. Over. We saw him twice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We saw them twice come back from a two goal advantage to lose that first game by one. Uh, they need a massive save right here and they get it. Man, no, I think this is by far not over and going to be intense the rest of the way. Oh, yeah, I think this is going to probably go back and forth. The biggest thing I want to see in difference is I'd like to see some less solo plays. Many of the of uh, the shots we've seen so far, oh, have come off of solos, but maybe not right now. America making me eat my words with what I believe was actually a solo play. No, pass coming out from uh, from gone season, but it's uh, it's a nice it's a nice shot regardless. Very well played. Absolutely. Massive goal. And now here comes the key. Oliver, every time NTC has answered with a quick goal after a goal from CMU, let's see what happens. If CMU can get that momentum forward as the ball is in their end. If they can tie this one up right here, I do agree with you. I think they've got a great shot, Jaren. But unfortunately, it looks like NTC is going to score here. And that they will. Dilmac going to come through here with a nice shot of his own and make this back to a two-goal lead. And Oliver, you have to wonder, is is that something that maybe needs to be maybe needs to be talked about? The fact that every time they give up a goal, they they relinquish one on the next kickoff. Maybe they maybe overcommitting after a goal. I'm not sure there. Oh, absolutely. I think that's probably one of the biggest factors here for everybody off of CMU. Central Methodist, unfortunately, I think the minute that they get some sort of confidence underneath their sails, they go back to the drawing board and how they want to attack. They start to believe that maybe they can change up their attack. But unfortunately, changing up their attack leaves holes in their defense. Another goal coming through here for Sergeant Dilmack. And it looked to me, just like we called it there, it looked to me like a massive over double commit in that mm -hmm. corner. And, and and the other side, the third man back in the middle of the field, not able to get back as Sar as, as Sergeant Dilmack puts in his, what, third goal of the match. Yeah, it's a, it's unfortunate right now for CMU, and that's really the only thing that you can, you can say. They're not playing horribly, nowhere even near. They're playing very well, but... The issue is, is the minute that they think they've got a key on how to get through the defense and get through and, I guess, suppress the offense off of NTC, NTC come back and show them that they haven't shown them everything yet. They got a couple of tricks up their sleeve and possibly another goal here that it will be. Dilmac going to read this one off the backboard perfectly. And, and you know what? I think some credit has to be given uh, to this CMU team. They've been dealing with a lot, not able to compete with some of these other teams in the first couple weeks of the season. So to come in here, you think they've they've given a pretty valiant performance so far trying to come back from these deficits. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I don't think they have played badly. Don't take that in any way, shape, or form as them uh, not playing well. I think part of it is just that NPC, they've continued to play better and better as this uh, as this series has gone on. The shots have become more lethal. The passes have become more exact. And their defense has even improved at that as another one is cleared out to the side by Dilmac and now thrown to the center for Lightning. You see how quickly they transition on their defense, Jer? And I'm starting to get scared for CMU. If we go to a third game, they can't try and get some momentum on their side. Well, yeah, at this point, you're probably, I mean, there's a shot, but the shot on goal is a little bit too late. So I think you're going to have to regroup here. And, and we could see a th at this road, all the roads lead to a 3-0 right now with the way this is going. I'd hope not. I'd love to see a great series out of these two teams. But as it goes right now, I think you're 100% correct there. This has been an absolute slaughter for NTC here in this second game. The third, oh my word, they almost pull off yet another one there at the end. But yeah, definitely the second game or the second game was a little bit more one-sided than the first one. I uh, Going into this next one, what do you think the keys are for the switch up here for CMU? Um, For me... Listen, CMU has proven that they can score goals against this NTC team. They put up four goals in the first match. They did put up a goal in the second round. I mean, they've proven that they can score goals, but time and time again, Oliver, it's the same thing. It's after a goal, an overcommitment leaves their net wide open. Every goal, Oliver, that we've seen from this NTC squad following a goal has been a basically an open net goal. So for me, I think you have to try to gain momentum. You've proven that you can score. You've got to be able to score, get excited. You can't get so hyped that you forget to play defense.
A hundred percent. I think part of that is, and we mentioned this in our, I, I should say, I mentioned this in the very first series we saw transition, transition defense is such an important part of Rocket League, being able to not only get out of your half and, uh, and get out effectively, but stay with the ball and be able to, you know, just continually play with it and get a good offense out of that. Unfortunately, that's just not something we've seen thus far out of CMU, but I don't think that they can't do that. I think if they make a couple minor adjustments, they'll be able to get out of their half a whole lot more effectively. But as we and get underway gonna... into this game here, we'll see if they can make those adjustments. Absolutely, absolutely. I didn't want to cut you off there. We have kickoff. Let's see, and for NTC, they can put this game away. And if you're CMU, you're just trying to stay alive. Massive almost shot there on goal. Oh, that could have been it. That could have been the momentum CMU needed. If they had hit that one right there, right then, I truly do think that they would have had a shot at just absolutely slaughtering this game with their momentum. But as it stands right now, it looks like we might go back to yet another tight series as this one goes off the backboard for Koi. Oh, but Dilmac taking another shot. Phantom somehow Ooh. saves that. Are you kidding me? Wow, what a save to have your team. Your team is down two games to nothing in this series and, and looks like you're about to give momentum away and a massive save as the ball is still in your end. I mean, CMU coming out here in this game, doing a good job of at least holding off the defense or holding off the offense, excuse me, of, uh, of NTC a little bit better than before. I still don't think that they're able to transition with these as well as they need to, though. Part of it is someone needs to be there for the follow-up that is not the original person touching the ball. And I get being hesitant here. It's unfortunate that you've lost two games in a row, but now is not the time to go completely hesitant. You need to show that you've got some fight left in you for the rest of this game. Absolutely, 100% correct. And oh, th you thought there was an opportunity there, but a massive save. But the ball is, is put back in the center end. Let's see what happens. This one goes down. Lightning's going to be all over this one, though, and pops it out to the side. And again, NTC, they look very composed in the way that they are playing. They're having a player come in and immediately having the other one uh, decommit so that they have a full spread all over the field. You see this one popped out to the corner, and uh, Lightning is immediately going to be all over it. Absolutely. And they are going to put it... Yep, going to put it... Looks like uh, the ball is on the NTC side. Let's see. Ball shot in the middle. Here's a shot on goal. No, not able to reach the ball. Very close so far, though. I will say we're almost down to the halfway point here, and this has been a much closer match than we've seen the entirety of this series so far. Dilmac tries to pop this one out to the center, but no one's home. Again, the offense also looks a little bit different. I don't know if it's just me, Jaren, but it does look like both teams are playing their offense a little bit more safely, but with a little bit more experimentation in what they're doing. Here's a shot on goal. Oh, a Ooh. massive save all over right there to maybe put this series with all the momentum headed the other direction. Wow. So close. Again, Phantom continually just being a brick wall on the line over and over again. We have seen him just save these shots and do such an efficient job of that. You can actually see, I was going to say, NTC a little bit scrambling on their back half. And Phantom from one half to the other, look at this play. A massive all the way run up that center line picks up the boost and says no way jose bottom of the corner it's a fiesta and cmu takes the lead wow now here's the thing we've seen this before we've yep. seen the goal come out the question is does ntc immediately respond like they have the last two games so far it's a little bit longer than it had been previously and with them on their back heel here in their own half now you wonder, is this actually going to be as a repeat of the last two timelines? And so far, it looks like they haven't. It looks like they didn't overcommit to that ball when they played it in. They still have a man back, but here's going to be the challenge. A huge demo that stops the goal from getting in. Wow, Oliver. Big play right here for CMU. Absolutely. I really do think that this is a completely different team from CMU. Unfortunately, a little bit of a miscalculation there at a Phantom who's got no boost and is unable to get to the ball. But regardless of that, we haven't seen many mistakes. The double commits have been far and few. Very, very uh, few of them in comparison to the last two games here. So as they've gotten into this game, this is almost a completely new CMU team who have played incredibly effective so far. Absolutely. Going to be maybe a shot on goal. No, there's no one. You thought he might have centered that to try to get a shot on goal, but nobody there. His lightning Ooh. plays the ball in. Massive demo, Oliver. Holy moly. 
I mean, America, you just got to give credit to him. That was a very heads-up play. Realizes that Lightning wants to go for the fake there and just takes him completely out of the play. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough to keep NTC after half, though. So something we saw earlier, NTC very good at suppressing the defense, not allowing them to transition easily. So Koi Boy here out on the... Oh, corner might be able to continue that again. Another demo coming out. Continual demos here for uh, everyone off of CMU, and maybe this is the key to the game here. Maybe that this looks like, like you said, it a completely different team. They are playing defense. They are putting pressure. Here's an oh. opportunity. No way. Oh, no, it's the crossbar. Oh no. Uh oh. And you gotta hope that doesn't take away confidence. There, you had a lot of momentum going into that <laughs> shot, and that was going to be huge for you. And unfortunately, now it looks like they may still just have the 1-0 lead. They just need to hold off for another 10 seconds now. And if they can do that, that will be that for this game. But man, what a close call on that shot. Such a pretty shot at that, too. Absolutely. And this ball's cleared. And if this ball can get to the ground, that's it. It could be all she that's wrote, it. and that it will be. What a clear. And Oliver, how about it? CMU, absolutely impressive right there to be able to push back. And guess what? We are going to get a game number four. Let's do it. I'm happy to see it. I, uh, like I said, I didn't want the sweep as much as I love to see sweeps and see a team just absolutely perform. I think that this is definitely a close series. And I truly do think that it's fair to see at least one game go to each team. I'm hoping we can get to a game five here and maybe see one more victory. But we've seen it before when NTC are on. I mean, they're, they, they are on. So if they bring it back out for this game, I mean, it's going to be crazy. Absolutely. And we want to take a second to go ahead and apologize for the slight delay. We have some action that we're not being able to miss, but our producer, uh, Caleb Gluby, is now sharing that with us. So that should not be an issue. He'll be letting us know when we're going to go to kickoff. Uh, and before we go anywhere, I do want to just take a look inside, remind you that you can follow us on social media at NECC Games on Instagram and Twitter um, for all kinds of updates and, and giveaways and all kinds of fun things that we have coming. And while I look, I do want to give a big shout out in the Twitch chat tonight, uh, Biowolf X. And I also want to say it looks like the Ungentleman is a big Bass from the Past fan. Uh, so Indeed, we yeah. want to give, <laughs> give a big shout out to them. So we have kickoff in this game. Let's get it. I'm very excited to see how this one goes. Like we mentioned, we'd love to see a game five here. Try not to be biased as a caster, but you always love to see a tight last game. Oh, speaking of tight, slotting it in there. Lightning having the littlest angle and what a shot. Absolutely. Lightning comes out and says, listen, I know it's your first game in the NECC, but I've got dinner reservations and I've got somewhere to be. No thank you. And one cold lead for NTC. Wow absolutely impressive there for them just what a ridiculous way to start and unfortunately that's the opposite of what you're looking for if you're a cmu fan here we mentioned how much momentum has really been a huge factor in this uh series alone here so with a one goal lead that's not a good start unfortunately for cmu it's incredible for ntc there though who have shown again when they're on they truly are on. They're hitting shots like no other. Their defense is absolutely solid. So CMU now have to try and keep themselves in this game mentally. Absolutely. And the ball is played in. There might be an opportunity here. There's a shot in the corner. Ooh. Oh, and it hits the post. It hits the post. And now, now they got to make sure they're back. Oliver, what a play on goal there. Again, we see another post shot, something going so close. And I'm hoping, I mentioned this last game, I hope that doesn't take them out of the game. CMU going from what could have been a 2-0 lead in the last game to hitting the post two goals in a, or two, I guess, shots, I should say, in a row now here. They've got to be careful. As much as these shots are pretty, you'd much rather have an effective one than one that's uh, that looks like a banger. Absolutely. And this, hey, we might have an advantage here. It looks like, yeah, we do. This ball's going to be centered. Shot opportunity. Oh, Ooh. not able to connect in air with the follow-up. And But now, is there anyone back to stop Lightning? You don't want Lightning in the middle like that by himself. You definitely do not want him. Of all people off of NTC, you'd like to try to suppress in offense. Lightning's probably the one to, uh, the one to watch here. He's had such an impressive series thus far. But again, the demo's coming out for CMU, and it's going to lead to a goal. Gone season immediately bangs that one through off the demo. 
Absolutely. And hey, CMU says, I don't care what your dinner reservation is. You can catch Wendy's on the way home. <laughs> what a goal. And let's go 1-1. One, one. We are trying to push this game. What This is what Rocket League should be like, Oliver. Oh, absolutely. You love to see a close series. As much as I said, like I said, as much as a 3-0 sweep is, uh, it's fun to watch. It's it's great to see an impressive team, you know, absolutely decimate their competition. But you love to see it when you've got a close series like this and you really don't know who's taking the match. The CMU have stepped it up here after having some shaky games. They've really shown that you're not going to be able to predict the rest of this series. They're in it to win it. Absolutely. And the ball's played to the center. Let's see if it gets cleared. It looks like it will be cleared here. Huge Ooh. demo. Ball cleared to the center. And we're starting to see the physical play pick up a little bit as well. Both teams starting to demo like crazy. Here's an opportunity. No. Back out to the middle. Oh, and again the post though. Another opportunity thwarted by the post here. Again here. CMU getting... Oh, so close here, but the accuracy issues continue to plague them. Absolutely. If you're NTC, the most valuable player in your team right now, MVP doesn't stand for most valuable player. It's most valuable post because that post <laughs> has saved them in this match. 100%. I mean, it's just been the plethora of shots we've seen out of both teams, though. You got to wonder who's going to be the first to drop. If we go to an overtime here, I'll be honest, I'd be surprised. Both these teams look like they want a Oh, they want a goal so badly, but just can't quite come away with it. Oh, my goodness. Massive gameplay. Double commit, a demolition on goal. And here's an opportunity. Oh. Is it oh. going to go? Oh, he's just not there. He's smartly. He stays back, doesn't let Lightning run away. But that's a huge bump. Oh, wow. What good Rocket League play we have right now. Again, this is just, you see the physical play has been coming up so, so often here in this game. And it makes sense. For, uh, for the last couple of seasons, meta, the meta really has been the demo and bump plays. People have realized how much you can use that to your advantage. So for teams like this to start getting in on it themselves, you can see how much of a difference it makes. If you take the right player out at the right time, you've not only got uh, an advantage in terms of players, you've usually got an open goal because defensive rotations just don't work the same in a 2v3. Absolutely. And this ball is going to be played in the other end. Let's see what happens. Low boost here. But here's a shot. Oh, it's just not able to play it right, and it goes left. Oh, oh my word. I don't, I don't know if my heart can take much more of this. We've just had a million shots going back and forth, and right now I'm just on the edge of my seat waiting for some shot to drop here. If we go to overtime, I have a feeling we're going to have a long one at that. Neither team is willing to give up a goal all that easily. As this one's thrown out to the center, I don't think we're getting one here either. No, again, a plethora of saves. Wow. And let's just see. The ball's going to... We have an opportunity. This is, oh, and sorry for getting my words mixed up. I am just so excited at the edge of my seat. Ball is played into the NTC end. Let's see how this match is going to end up with 10 seconds left on the clock. And as it goes to a one-to-one -one here, you got to wonder what type of goal is going to be the one to score here. We've seen a couple of passing plays trying to come out, a couple of aerial plays, but so far, most of these normal shots that we've seen have been completely shut down. As we go to overtime here, I don't know who to I don't know who to pick. Both these teams are playing at such a high level. Oliver, it's pretty simple. NTC, if they put a goal in the net, they win this series. And for CMU, a chance to stay alive. Let's go. Um, yo, and the demo coming out in the center here. CMU, got to be careful here. We mentioned how much the physical play has come into it. And for out of these two teams, personally, I think that NTC can survive off of their rotations a little bit more. Taking out a player off of CMU could be really dangerous for them. They've got to be careful, as we've seen many times, like you mentioned. Double commits and rotation errors have been a huge thing plaguing them in this game. So we'll see oh. how this goes for them. And Lightning almost has... Here's an opportunity! Ooh. Here's... Ooh. Oh, massive save! Redirect to the center, but Lightning is there to clear it to the side end. I thought we were going to end the match right there. I really did as well. You got to give a big shout out to Sergeant Dilmak, who has done such a good job on defense here so far. Two saves in this game and a plethora of shots for him. He's just done such a good job of holding down the back half of the field so that his team can take shots like this. No, indeed not. Lightning almost able to get the solo play out, but just couldn't quite get it. But it's back in the middle. And again, another one going high. Jaron, I don't understand what's going on. Both teams have just basically turned the goal into a brick wall. 
Absolutely, and, and, and there's a massive demolition, so there's an advantage on the end for NTC. Ball's in the middle, but there's nobody there, Oliver. And here's a run, 2v1 situation. No, but the ball is cleared into left center. My goodness, what a Rocket League match. And you can see how much time both teams are giving to each other. They do not want to be the player to make a mistake and leave an open opportunity for their opponents. Everybody is playing so cautiously because they know this is make or break for one team and this is the end of the series for the other one. So either way, a whole lot of pressure on both teams back here. They want this win and they want it now and there it is! CMU! Oh my Oliver, word. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry to yell over the top of you, but holy guacamole with some pita chips on the side. CMU wins this game and we're going to, we're two games to two. Oliver, how has this match turned around like this? I am so hyped, everybody. Woo! I can't believe it. That was an incredibly well-played match out of both teams there. The main thing to say is that really all of the issues we had for the last like two games are gone. They have played incredibly well. Both teams are playing at an insanely consistent level. I I have no idea who's taking this match. You for I mean the other thing is you also got to remember here. This is a reverse sweep. This is we're looking at the eyes of a reverse. I don't know how this is going to go, but if you get reverse swept here, I mean, wow. I mean, and so <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have this up. We're uh, our producer is going to put us back up there, but holy moly, what a game so far. If you are in the Twitch chat, 42 of you in there watching right now. We are so blessed. We're thank. We're so grateful for the support you've given us. Big shout out to anyone that's watching on ESTV now as well, available on Samsung TV Plus. But Oliver, it comes down to this. And Caleb, just interrupt me in my ear. Let us know when we're going to kickoff. We're going right to kickoff right now as it's whoever wins this game. NTC will go to 2-0 and o or will CMU go to 1-0. and o. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Very, very excited here. I sure. mean, going into this, do you have any in your in your personal unbiased opinion? Who do you think is more prepared for this game going into this? Do you think the momentum favoring uh, the momentum favoring CMU is going to carry to this, or do you think that NTC have the ability to try and bring this one out, Jaron? I think that NTC here's not going to be an opportunity. No, okay. In, I think NTC absolutely has the ability. They've proven that they can play together as a team on defense. As you see them moving the ball up the field right now with the opportunity just off the mark. But right now, if are you kidding me? CMU two games in a row able to come back. I cannot imagine what the atmosphere in that Central Methodist uh, Central Methodist University Arena is like right now. Oh, I can't even imagine. It's got to be explosive. And the biggest thing for CMU, I would have to agree. Ooh, John with a nice shot out of nowhere here. And absolutely, as we're talking about it, look at this shot. Mrs. Ba hits that left front wheel, just touches it in the corner, says pop, ow, and puts it in for a 1-0 advantage. What a turn of events we've had so far. And the craziest thing about that is I was just about to say that I think the biggest advantage for CMU is going to be their defense. Last game, we saw them put up a complete brick wall in front of their net, and we're not allowing anything to go through here. But right now, their offense is looking extremely efficient. What a banger of a shot to put this one in. And with a minute gone now, this is a lot of momentum on CMU's side. Absolutely. And the massive demolition, lightning gets demoed there in that corner. No advantage. And if you're CMU, you have to be excited because you have taken pure momentum right now in this match. Oh, yeah. Scoring early here. I mean, we mentioned it in the first games as well. If the person to score first, and I guess the team to score first, really, is the people or is usually the team that's going to be able to carry the momentum throughout the match. So coming out to this 1-0 to uh, lead here with only about a minute and a half gone is huge for CMU here. Absolutely. And let's see. But right now, Oliver, all the momentum going that way as the ball is cleared. But let's see if there's an opportunity. Uh -oh. as the ball centered. Ball drops down. And you see the patient offense starting to build here for NTC. They might have gone back to the drawing board after that last one, realized they were playing a bit too explosive and are just trying to break themselves down a little bit and just go back to the fundamentals. I think that's a huge thing for a lot of these Rocket League teams. I've seen it so many times before. They get flustered. They realize their original shots are not making it through, so they go for something too explosive. And as a result, they just kind of lose their fundamentals. Right now, you see a lot of good fundamental play coming out of NTC as they're trying to play. Ooh, patiently, with the demo coming out. You got to be kidding me. Believable. The massive demo takes Lightning out. 
and you it and it's like a Hollywood movie script. The underdog is rising through the ashes. CMU up two to nothing. Fantastic. Oh my word. And this has just been so back and forth so far between the two teams up until now. But in this game, CMU have come out and said, hey, this is our one to win. We want this reverse sweep as badly as possible. Oh, and with almost another goal coming through here, America just barely putting that one off target. You got to wonder, what can NTC do here? What do they need to switch up in order to break down this defense? And, and I think that is something I am not sure what they can do because I, I'll be honest with you, I'm definitely not this good at Rocket League. But <laughs> I will tell you this much, CMU has done an amazing job of redirecting. But here's a Ooh. shot in the right corner. Lightning says no way and puts one in the top right corner two to one this game is far from over with still more than two minutes on the clock and a huge shout out to koi boy on that one what a perfect pass out to the middle giving lightning not an easy shot but an absolute banger of a shot that he can pull off oh oh i was gonna say but immediately the lead goes back no instead not somehow ndc walking away with the same score line as before there oh my word was that close Wow, and again, that MVP of the game, the post, so many shots coming off tonight as this ball's played into the center. Oh, drop down again. Koi Boy's got the shot, this time a little bit off target, and Phantom tries to run with it out of his own half. But again, NTC, back to something we saw the first couple games. They're doing a good job of suppressing this defense and uh, suppressing the transition out of their own half for everybody off of CMU. Central Methodist need to be careful now as they're eyeing down another goal against them. And if they give up a 2-0 lead, all the momentum is back onto NTC's side. And they're going to have a good shot at pulling this one away. Here's a oh, shot. you got to be kidding. Are you kidding me? Sergeant Dillback says, I am in charge. Welcome to the United States Marine Corps. <laughs> you got to be moly. kidding me. A banger of a shot. And I mentioned this. You had to be careful of this. This was where all the momentum comes from, is these random one-off goals that just impress everybody. And you know right now, everybody off of CMU is kind of just sitting there in awe, like, holy cow, what oh a goodness. shot. Oh, my goodness. And I am I can see it in the Twitch chat. So much support for both of these teams. We see lots of NTCs, lots of CMUs and poggers in the chat. This is a fantastic matchup right now. Huge demo, which stops them from advancing the ball. NTC in control. And again, a big shout out to Sergeant Dilmack. I mentioned in the last game how much he had been a force on defense, but now here in this last game, he has stepped up his offense entirely as he makes yet another save. So from one coast to the other here, coast to coast, man, Dilmack has put on such a performance here. You got to hope that he continues to play this way throughout the series and the rest of the season. But with 30 seconds left, I think we're going to overtime. Absolutely. 30 seconds left. But here's a shot, here's a center. Let's see, they are right, just right there. Their defense is right there. Neither one of these teams wants to give this away. And oh my goodness, Oliver, this is so close. Here's a, here's a, here's an opportunity. Ooh. And the post. Yet again, the post coming in as the savior here. Oh my word. And you can't really blame CMU here. Every shot you've taken that has been anywhere near the center of the net has been blocked and completely turned around on you. So you have to take shots like that out to the edge. You gotta just hope one of them bounces in though. Unfortunately, so far, it hasn't worked. And to overtime we go, both teams fighting for their series here. And right now, here it is. Here's an open get! And it's in! CMU comes from two down to do a reverse sweep and win this match. Are you kidding me? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the NECC. My goodness. I'm speechless. I don't, for NTC there, I'm not sure what happened on the defense. Phantom cherry picking at the perfect spot in midfield and reads that in perfectly, takes his time and dribbles it on in. I can't even, I, I don't even know. I can't, I, I have no words for that. Oh my goodness. I, listen, I, wow. I can tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, if you have been watching any CC gameplay, I'll tell you right now, I don't know what the candidate for game of the year is, but that 
was a fantastic and by far one of the best games we have seen here at the NECC. Oliver, I there's so much to say and so much to get into. I mean, let's try and break this thing down, but what a massive win. Central Methodist University comes into tonight, kicks the door in and says, hello, welcome. We are Central Methodist University and takes their first win. Wow. Oh my God. They just they came through with such efficiency in these last couple of games. I mean, we mentioned it in the at the end of the game there, but that was a reverse sweep. Central Methodist had so many opportunities that if they had been a little bit less uh, mentally solid there and a little bit less uh, a little bit less fortitude, they could have just tapped out at any moment. They went down a plethora of times and could have just said, "All right, well, guess this is in our series." But no, sir, came back and just absolutely played their hearts out there and a very very heads up play at the end there after us talking about how their positioning had been a little bit spotty the entire series they come back in the last game and prove us wrong show exactly how solid they are as a rotation and how quickly they can transition into a goal a very very impressive final game absolutely and and i think like we said the thing that we have to break down is how about let's I want to look all the way back and and listen, this is something super important. I think in my mind, I think we look back to game one, two different occasions. On two occasions, CMU fell to a two goal advantage and they lost that first game five four. And one of the things that you and I continued to touch on after the first two games falling down, we always saw them score a goal and always get a double commit and get scored on the thing that I think Oliver won this match pure, plain, simple to the point is the fact that every time that they scored a goal moving forward, they stopped letting the momentum get away from them and they stopped double committing to balls in the back end and played defense after momentum. And it is the reason that they're standing here today with this Absolutely. three to two victory. Absolutely. I mean, we mentioned it. It was the it, the brick wall that came out there in that fourth game. The absolute unrelenting defense that came out of CMU in that fourth game just was so efficient. And a big thing about that is not only were they efficient on defense, that transition out of their own half was so much stronger than we had seen. And I mean, we mentioned it in the fourth game. The momentum was entirely on CMU's side. A very well-played uh, fifth game at NTC, though, not to take anything away from them. They really did put up the best fight possible, but CMU rode that momentum as much as they could. And especially after coming after uh, coming back from a 1-0 deficit, if you remember correctly, NTC came out there with an explosive start and then had two uncontested goals from CMU where they just played absolutely incredible. What a series. I mean, wow. And you just know what wow. the best part of this entire conversation that we are having is? Is guess what? We're not done. <laughs> We are not done by any means. Ladies and gentlemen, here shortly, very shortly, we are going to pop up and we're not going to, we're going to keep the stream going, but we're going to come back here shortly. And ladies and gentlemen, Becker College, Becker College faces off against Montana University. 3 0 and 3 0. The battle of undefeated finishes out the night. Here at the NECC, Oliver, it is going to be a fantastic night. I'm very excited. Like we mentioned, this is it's undefeated teams going against undefeated teams here. Mm. This is about as close as you can get. Becker and Montana are coming into this one ready to play. And after seeing two back-to-back -back series here, you got to imagine both of these guys, they're, they're ready to show us something new. I don't know if there's much to show us that's new, but man, if they can have as even a third as close of a series as we just saw, it'll be explosive. So I'm Absolutely. excited. Absolutely. A hundred percent. We want to remind all of you that are watching in our Twitch chat right now, we provide you content from Collegiate Esports five days a week. So do us a favor, hit that follow button, join the family, obviously turn those notifications on five days a week. We have Collegiate Action. It is going to be a fantastic night. So we are going to take just a step back. We're going to take just a few minutes away and then we will come back with the battle of the undefeateds, Becker College versus Montana University, going to be a fantastic matchup. Uh, before we go, we want to say thank you to our partners. Thank you to our friends at Helix Esports for all that they do. Obviously, our linear TV partner, you might be watching from there. I know you love that kind of exciting action. 
ESTV, now available on Samsung TV Plus and everywhere on the Roku channel, providing you esports action from around the globe on their platform. And of course, our newest partners in the building, our friends at HyperX, some of the best gear in gaming, now comes to the NECC. And I tell you what, Oliver, welcome to the NECC, man. I could not have picked a better night for you to get get your feet wet over here. I I don't think it's possible. <laughs> it was incredible so far. The two games I've casted, or the two series, I should say, just there's no topping them. It's been incredible so far. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, for our commissioner, Jacob Van Ryan, for our executive producer this evening and director of esports, Caleb Glooby, we thank you for tuning in. We do want to remind you that you can follow both of us casters online at Bass from the Past, at the Jaron Bell on Twitch and social media. We appreciate we appreciate your love. And we want to remind you we will be back very, very shortly for that Becker College versus Montana University matchup. And until then. Wow, what a night as CMU comes back from a O from a 2-0 deficit to win the match 3-2 with the reverse sweep over Northern Central Technical College. What a fantastic match. We will see you next time. Until then, stay beautiful and stay blessed. This is the NECC College Esports lives here. Only by frozen memories Lost His time Racing all these broken dreams tonight And we'll
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. It didn't take us long, but we are right back to you with live Friday Night Live Rocket League action. And, of course, I am joined by my main man right down there underneath me. Hello, 
Mr. Oliver Bass, Bass from the past. What is up, my guy? I am more than excited. My heart is still pumping oh. from the last series we had. I can't believe how close that was. It was ridiculous. Absolutely. Guys, if you are just now joining the chat to watch tonight's matchup, you missed a barn burner shootout till the end as Central Methodist University came back from a 2-0 deficit to pull a reverse sweep on North Central Technical College. What an impressive match, winning 3-2. But guess what? The action doesn't stop there. We bring to you, we are moments away. Moments away. I'm sorry I'm so excited. I still cannot come down from the match we just saw. But talk about coming off a match like that, Oliver. Now we have a undefeated matchup. Becker College, 3-0. Montana University, the Grizzlies, 3-0. Battling it out here to end final Friday Night Live. I mean, I can't imagine how close this is going to be. You've already mentioned both the teams are undefeated here, and both teams know that coming into this. So this is everything but the kitchen sink getting thrown out here. You got to imagine this is going to be an absolute just, I would I guess, a battle of titans here. Shot after shot after shot, save after save after save. And there's not much really we can explain besides just get prepared for one heck of a series. Absolutely. We do want to remind you as we go ahead and we let the teams know that we are are in the chat. We want to remind you and let you know that we are thankful for our partners. Thank you to our friends at Helix Esports for all the things that they do for us. Of course, big thank you to our linear TV partner. You might be watching live right now on ESTV now available on Samsung TV plus and the Roku channel, bringing you esports action from around the globe on their platform and our newest partner. I always wear mine. I know I have my Helix 7.1s on right now, but our friends at HyperX, HyperX, the top, some of the top gear in all of gaming now comes to the NECC. Uh, I'll tell you what, what amazing, amazing things happening at the NECC. Oliver, this is so much fun to be a part of. I'm so, so, so excited here for this to begin. And uh, I, I, we're just about ready to go underway here. I can't ask, or I could not have asked, I should say, for a uh, for a better start to my NC or NECC career here as a caster. They have done so. We've had such close games thus far here, and it looks like we're just about ready to head into our next one here. So as we get underway here for the kickoff in this game, I uh, I'm just expecting a close series here. I don't know about you, Jaron, but I'm just excited to see some high octane Rocket League. Absolutely. Let's get right into it. It looks like we will have Montana in the orange. Um, as you tab out, I can't see. Uh, Montana in the orange, and it looks like, yes, Becker in the blue. Indeed it will be. It's going to be a little bit of a, of a back and forth between these two teams to start off here, as neither one of them, I think, want to overcommit here. A lot of the first game, as uh, we might have mentioned this already tonight, but it really is for every single first game of a series like this. It's kind of just feeling out how your opponents are going to play, how you want to play personally, and just getting over the nerves as well. Oh, as the double commit comes out into the corner, a little bit of a bump between everybody off of Becker there, and somehow they come away without, without any goals for it against them. Absolutely, and what a way to stay alive is there's a shot in goal, but still pushed away. Becker playing fantastic defense. A lot of movement we're seeing right here, Oliver, from this game. Oh, yeah, immediately you can see how explosive this series is going to be as the ball continually stays in the air for a really long period of time so far. Absolutely. Ball played in to the Montana end. Let's see if Becker can capitalize, but it looks like we might have a run here. Oh, slips right under that missed demo. Played to the center. Here's a shot on goal. And bounces off a defender into the top right of the net. Montana jumps on the board. The Grizzlies 1-0 in this match. Oh, my God. And what a pass out of Vaca Flocka there. As he pops out off the ceiling, beats one on the wall, and then just dishes it out to the center. Montana putting up a statement here to start right now. You can just see how in sync this whole team is playing with great defensive posture, great offensive posture. And Becker, 
Another double commit trying to go for that save here, and another one trying to go to the other half. They got to be careful. If they don't play as a coordinated unit here, I don't think they're going to have a shot against such an effective Montana team. Yep, absolutely, 100%. And I have been lucky enough to watch a Becker match, and they are a solid, solid squad here. Right now, Montana just not letting them breathe. Let's see here. They have defenders back. This ball's played into the center. This ball's going to go. Oh, wow, Cocktray with beautiful air motions. That is so hard to do up in the air like that. Absolutely. One thing I will say, though, as cool as those plays are, sometimes they can kind of just waste your boost. You notice how uh, he goes out to the side there, and Cogtray, while he did have a nice dribble, there's not much that came out after this. His team's still on offense here, but with little boost for many of them, you got to hope that they can at least try and hold off the counterattack, which is more or less inevitable at this point, but somehow Heads just holding on to the ball here. Zero boost, and Flock is going to be in the center. What a suppression from Montana so far. Even at the low boost, they were somehow able to turn that into a 20 to 30 second offense. Absolutely, and they have done nothing. Every time that Becker gets momentum, they are able to turn it around and take opportunities. Let's see here. Got another chance here. Cog puts this out to the corner, but he might try to get a pass out to the center. That he will! And Vaka Flocka with a perfect shot into the top right. Wow, what a impressive, impressive... I mean, there's not much you can say. Oh Block down two defenders in your face, and you're still able to slide that through to the top of the net for a 2-0 advantage. And right now, I mean, I mentioned Montana doing such a good job of keeping momentum on their side. There are many times here where they probably needed to either decommit or get some boost or something, but somehow they have just realized that they, if they suffocate everybody off of uh, everybody off of Becker enough here, they don't really need to continue and uh, run a normal rotation. If they can fluster Becker enough here, they'll have all the momentum on their side and they'll be able to win this game pretty, pretty steadily. At the moment, it's 2-0, to zero, though. That's not enough of a lead for you to be able to be comfortable, though, especially against a team like Becker. Absolutely. We saw that in our last match. Those 2-0 deficits get turned around. So Becker, but still the ball in there inside of the field. Looks like a double commit here. Let's see what they do. Ooh, double commit coming out from Montana, though. And now heads the last one back here. Has to make a save, and that he will not. An immediate Ramil Atsipab, I'm sorry if I'm <laughs> pronouncing that wrong, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, uh, is going to even this, or not even this one up, but bring the deficit down just a little bit. Wow, what a goal. The English language is hard sometimes, ladies and gentlemen. It is a 2-1 Ramil. <laughs> Let's just go with Ramil as the ball is played into the Montana end. I love this job. So far, we've had a very back and forth so far. And for Wait a minute. Oh, and off the bar, I was about to say, I went dead silent because I really thought that was in, but you gotta be kidding me. The explosiveness so far. Wow, these teams, you can tell right now, Oliver, you can tell why these teams are 3-0 and right now. Oh yeah, 100%, both of them playing to pretty much their max capacity after a little bit of the nerves were shook, out, shook off for Becker. They're now coming through effectively. Ooh. Taco's got the demo in the center, but just can't get the follow-up from Yokels. And he played that off the backboard so well, just not able to finish. As a shot to the right, it's a goal! Contre, wow, what a goal to the top right corner. Puts it over to the defender, and wow. Goal. What a, and just so, so close from Ramil, but unfortunately, as the last man back there, he had to make some sort of touch to delay that offense, and without a perfect one there, you can tell Montana, they're just playing too well for you to have any sort of mistakes there, taking advantage of that thoroughly and just absolutely playing their hearts out here in the last minute of the game. They've re-solidified their lead here, and as the last 10 seconds come out, I think that might be all she wrote. Absolutely. As the ball is still in the air, it looks like it will get killed, and that is it. Montana University, the Grizzlies, come in here and take this first game. 3-1. What, what an impressive play all around from them. Really just a very, very resilient team, even up until the very end there, getting back that lead to a 3-1. to one. I mean... Really, not a bad performance out of Becker at all, though. I just think that they maybe need to make a couple of little adjustments on their defense as the goals that did come kind of came out of nowhere or off of a little bit of a blunder, unfortunately.
Absolutely. I think you're completely right. Uh, but again, how many times have we seen teams not start fast and then they're able to rebound? So to me, what I want to see is how will Becker College respond as we get ready to go into this re- game two of this best of five series? Absolutely. I think a big thing about it is, is just being able to keep that mental fortitude. We'd seen so many times today that as much as momentum is super, super important, if you don't let the, if you don't play to your best game and just sort of rely on the momentum to suppress the other team, they will turn it around on you in just a, in less than a second. CMU proved that after going down two games in a row, they came back with a third game that was incredible and continued to play that way throughout the series. So for everybody off of uh, everybody off of Becker right here, they need to try and just keep themselves in this game, keep themselves aware, and just be prepared for the next coming games here. Absolutely, and we are getting ready for click kickoff right now, and let's see who will take the advantage in game two of this best of five series. Already, we're looking at Montana taking some shots off here. Vaca's got another one, but he's not going to be able to get to that. Perf's going to be able to take this one out of his half, and Ramil will follow up. So all of a sudden, Becker having a scary start here, but they're able to get out of their own half and transition that pretty quickly. Here's a shot on goal. It's a huge save. Looks Was that heads? That, I think heads that saw, knocked that away. Oh my gosh, and then almost a great transition for them. Cogtra just can't quite get to the ball in the middle here. And Vaca, though, going to continue the offense as he puts this high. Cogtra, unfortunately, though, can't finish this one off after a great save from Perf. Now, can Becker try and transition with this one to the other half? Ball going to be played into the center here. Becker looking to try to take momentum. Let's see if they can do it. A bit of a bump there, but nothing really comes of it. Ball played back into the Becker corner. You'd love to see a center here and a shot on goal for Becker. Yeah, so far, you're, you're also seeing similar things that we had the last game, and I think that this is something that may come into effect later in the series. You see teams trying to commit and stay on their offense when they don't have any boost, and they're just trying to, you know, continue in any way that they can. Ooh, but a great shot out of Cogtre after the first one from Vaca is going to immediately allow Montana to get a lead here. And absolutely, they... What a play, you know, they knocked down the first two shots, saved them both, but just not able to stop the three piece. And it's a one goal advantage for Montana. Yeah, and we, we mentioned this in the last couple games, in the last couple series. Ooh, his heads almost gets a really nice dribbling play out to the center, but your defense is only as solid as how quickly you can get off your own half and turn it into something effective. If you continually block shots, that's one thing. But if you block a shot and leave it in front of your net again, the other team is going to obviously take shots afterwards as well. So right now, for everybody off of Becker, they've got to be careful. Despite a pretty solid defense so far, they need to work on getting out of their own half a little bit more effectively. Absolutely. The ball is going to be played in to that Montana side. Let's Ooh. see. That's a massive flick. And it's almost turning something out there. Almost. Let's see. Shot on goal. And not able to save it. Vaca flock of flame in the bottom corner of the net. Beautiful pass and a massive 2-0 advantage for Montana. And, demo- and if you haven't played Rocket League enough to be able to hit, to hit shots like that, you don't quite understand how ridiculous of a shot that is. Vaca has to slot that in exactly where he needs to. He knows he's got one in net and other defenders around him. Just such an impressive shot out of him. And almost another goal for Montana here as they have another shot out of Cogtre. Vaca going to shoot this one back into the center. But right now, it looks like most of the momentum is for Montana here. I'm not sure exactly what everybody off of Becker need to do to transition this. But right now, they just look a little bit flustered. Well, anytime the ball is just in your end consistently, you can't get any opportunities. Just like right there, they try to get it, but they're center it to the middle. You just have to be able to clear the ball and at some point take an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Pick up some boost. Try to, you know, get yourself into position for a follow-up touch, something similar. Something we've seen so far in Montana is that they've continually put themselves in position despite their boost totals here. And I think that it really depends on the team, but against Becker, it's been working. Another shot attempt coming out there, and they've really done such a good job of managing themselves at low boost and still being an extremely effective team. 
And absolutely, if you watch the way, listen, I am by no means anywhere close to as experienced as you are, uh, Bass, here in, in Rocket League, but you can just see the movement and the mm -hmm. transition, people getting back and rotating. It's unbelievable to watch. I mean, they've played so incredibly well so far. Montana has done not only a good job of maintaining possession once they get into the other half, but their defense has been pretty much picture perfect. The boost steal there out at midfield is such a heads up play. Oh, but unfortunately, the demo in the middle is going to leave this one open, and Taco's going to open it up for his team. Talk about a, what about Taco able to just put that in the corner? Wow. And, and, and again, we talk about the meta, it shows up, and it's a one to two lead. I mean, if you use the boot, or if you use the demos correctly, like you said, I mean, it's just, it can be everything, Jaren. Unfortunately, right now, it's not going to be enough. With a minute left here, they need to score another one, and they need to keep this momentum on their side. They would love to not go down two to zero here, but if they can't get a goal off the next minute, Becker College are looking at having to reverse sweep, and. Oh, I think they might just have to. Cogtray getting another one in here before the before the last uh, last minute's over. Absolutely unbelievable shot. Played it in the corner and just nothing you can do about it. You're trying to come back out of net and and just a massive play right on top of you. More or less unfortunate. There's not much you can really do there. And as the uh, as the clock ticks down here, I think this is not necessarily all she wrote, but I don't know about a comeback here for Becker as more shots coming out. A little bit of a mind game here in the middle, but I think Becker might have to go back to the drawing board for the following games as they come up uh, with 30 seconds left here and a two-goal deficit. Absolutely. Ball going to be played in, and again, Montana, even with the two-goal advantage, consistent pressure and shots on goal. Yeah, they've done a good job of continuing to press this ball. Like I mentioned, even at low boost, they've been able to just take shots that most other teams would not even dare take. But they've got enough confidence, and they are playing well enough that they can really afford to do that as another great save comes out of heads. This one played to the side. Cogtray going to try to take this one off the backboard. Heads has got a shot, though, and that's going to be that. Now, 4-1, to one, and if you thought that this wasn't possible beforehand, that the... Uh, comeback wasn't possible that's that's about that that's gonna probably be it for this game umt taking a 2-0 lead here in the series this is gonna be scary for everybody off of becker from here on out unbelievable and let's see if this ball will touch the ground it should and it will and my my goodness let's take a second and look at the leaderboard let's pull that up and how about those scores? How about, look, Cogtray might have the score advantage right there, but how about heads and the way he mm -hmm. played? Oh, my goodness. Just an impressive performance from everybody all around. Two goals on five shots and two assists for Cogtray. Absolutely an integral part of their offense. Meanwhile, on the other half, heads with two saves himself. With only three shots coming out of Becker, that's pretty impressive. He's done a good job of suppressing their offense. And I think all around Montana, they're coming into this next game with a lot of momentum. But Jaron, we've seen this already once before. The reverse sweep, still very, very much a possibility here. Absolutely. Listen, I, I, I think Becker is a fantastic team. But from what I'm seeing right now, Montana just outclassing them at, at every aspect, especially if you watch the movement that Montana has rotating around and just not giving them any room to breathe. Becker can't even get out of their own net to be able to get a boost. Uh, if Oliver, if it's you, what are you doing right now for this Becker side? What do you do to turn this around? I mean, the biggest thing for Becker, in my opinion right now, is trying to take advantage of that low boost. I don't know how aware they are of how low a boost Montana have had for many of these plays, but they need to play a little bit less hesitant. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean break your entire rotation and try and just go at the ball like crazy. I'm not recommending ball chasing, but I do think to a degree, stuff like that where Yokels is going in ahead of time and buying his team some time in the back half, it's crucial. You can't afford to allow the other team to continue suppressing you or they're going to do it all day. Absolutely. And and again, we see it just like last game, Montana. And look, and here's the thing. Look at them. They have two guys back. It feels like they have. But here's an opportunity. Massive save. Are you kidding me? Now, let's see if Becker can respond. 
they have people in position. Here's a flick to the middle. So Let's see. close. I don't know if you noticed that either, but that save wasn't actually a save for everyone off of Montana, and yeah. this won't be either. How oh my goodness, the thunder comes down. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Ramil says, as you can see his emote after the goal, he says, welcome to the Thunderdome and a 1-0 advantage. They got to hold on to this the best they can now. Montana have shown that they've got some tenacity in them and that they've got some firepower, so they can't afford to blow this lead here. They've got to play very carefully and not allow Montana any more momentum than they've already had the last two games. The save out here from Perf as he takes this out to the midfield. That might be all they need to start an offense here on the other half. Absolutely. Let's see. There's a shot. Here's an opportunity. Oh, and it's just off to the right. Oliver, what a close play. Again, the post coming into play here. MVP indeed. We've seen it happen so many times today, but the good thing for everybody off of Becker here is they didn't need that shot to drop as much as they just want to continue this momentum. Already, we're seeing a very different Montana team here. We're looking a little bit flustered by how much speedier everybody off of Becker have been. And another goal for Emil from a perfect redirect. And are you kidding me? He said, let me break out the four iron and hit it from the fairway across the entire field. What a laser beam for the 2-0 advantage for Becker College. And we mentioned this earlier. This is the thing you got to be afraid of. Reverse sweeps are possible, especially when you start giving momentum to the other team. The minute that all of this momentum gets sucked away from Montana, they've got to start playing to the highest degree possible and not allow themselves to get in their own heads. Demo coming out there against Heads is going to be more than enough to, to probably trigger him a little bit, but Vaca is going to be able to take that over and just say, no worries, my guy, I got you. Absolutely, and I got him, he does. Ball played all the way from the center side off the left backboard, and Vaca, Vaca with the follow. Wow, what a goal. Just ridiculous how well Montana have been able to keep themselves in this game. They've been so resilient throughout this series here. And now they're only one goal down and trying to get the sweep here. But again, this is Becker fighting for their right here. They're going to lose this series in a sweep if they can't take away this victory here in this game. So they're going to try and do whatever they can to avoid that. Ball played in the center. Let's see how they, let's see how they play this. Momentum still on Montana's side. Ball looks like it might get cleared, and we might have an advantage here. Let's see. Good slow play out of Vaca there, but something interesting to note, as you saw in the other half, the reason this entire play started is because one player for Montana had no boost, and Yokel takes advantage. My goodness. He says, you're right. You have to fight for your right to party, and it is a party in that Becker College arena right now as they take a three to one advantage. Absolutely, I mean, so far, this has just been such a close match, but I think the biggest thing for everybody off of Becker is they truly have done what we were criticizing them of the last two games. They are taking advantage of that low boost. You notice how they're getting off of their half much more quickly because they are jumping on the ball at every moment they can. They are not allowing Montana to just play with them and mess with them like they did the last two games. They've come into this one showing some authority and it's worked out very well. Massive shot attempt on goal. He is, Cocktre is there. Let's see his perfect. Yeah, Taco's back. Let's see, the, there's a beautiful flick. As Yoko carries this one, you can just see the difference in the momentum between the two teams. He's almost beaten the entire defense. Uh-oh, but Vaca's got an open net, a bit of an overcommit. Taco could not afford that, and now it goes the other way. Oh, my goodness. And you saw, you could almost see it on the grill plate of the front of his car. You could see it on the face of it, and he knew. You could see as the ball went up, they committed, and he Taco just commits up too far, leaves an open opportunity, now down one goal. And here's, oh, oh no, it's a goal off the kickoff. How does that even happen? He's not able to save it. And Cogtre goes under Yokel to tie this thing up. Three to three. 50. 
Cogtray was just such a perfect 50 to bring that one through here. And now all of that momentum that went to Becker College has all of a sudden just been completely sucked out of them. I don't know about you, Jaren, but I'm getting a little bit scared for Becker here. Never mind. They'll make you me my You should be second. scared. Holy moly. Because they are right back on top. And Yokels jumps right over Vaca and puts it in the net. 4-3, Becker. My goodness. And indeed, chat's calling it out, and they're correct. Caster Curse coming into play for what actually might be the first time this year or this uh, today. So that's a bit longer than I usually get before my Caster Curse is up. So I'll take it, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. Big thank you to everyone in the Ooh. Twitch chat. It doesn't matter. Talk about a curse. We have put it on them. Halloween is around the corner, and it is spooky the way that Becker is coming back and playing up 5-3. You've got to be kidding. What a perfect play on the other half of the field, too. The dribble, just the fake out to say that he's going to be going right, gets the dive, and then immediately goes left. The accuracy there is absolutely perfect. Oh, but it's not going to matter. We're back to another one-goal lead as Vaca slots this one in from the left side. And Vaca just a, maybe a mistouch, but Vaca just waiting in the wings, gets up, taps it in. Massive, massive play. Absolutely. And I don't know about you, Jaren, but I, from what I'm seeing right now, it, this kind of just looks like shot after shot from both teams. The defense has started to break down here from both teams, and they're kind of just relentlessly shooting shots. Not as focused. We saw the one goal that was on an open net, and then we got another one off the open. All of a sudden, UMT are tying this up, and I have to say, I think it might be because of the defense. It, it has to be, Oliver, that's the only thing that I can understand because you come out, you and how many times have we seen a two-goal advantage tonight go away? This is a fantastic, we have kickoff, 50 seconds left. Montana can win this match right here, and for Becker, trying to push it to another game. And I know I would not be surprised if we see this one go to overtime, but because of how explosive that it's been so far, I'm worried about these teams in overtime. They have not focused on suppressing shots as much as they have focused on shooting shots. So really, if we go to an overtime here, we may just see an, insta an instance of who makes the first mistake on defense. And right now, I will say, Montana, they've cleaned themselves up in the last minute. I don't know about you, but I think they've got a good shot here. Absolutely. Let's see here. Ball played in 10 seconds. We might go to overtime, but here's a play. <gasps> cleared. Absolutely cleared. But here's a shot. He is able to flick it away. My goodness. We go to overtime. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what's at stake. Montana can win this match, and the Grizzlies can take the whole match home. Or Becker can push it. Let's see if we can push to a game four. You gotta imagine, Montana, what a win this would be for them, too. Not only are they gonna continue to be undefeated if they win here, but imagine getting it in a sweep. The amount of momentum on your side for the rest of the season is just unreal. And you've got so much that you can just be confident in as you go on from there. Ed's popping this one out to the center. Cogtray's on this one, and it's a 1v1. Gets the demo instead, though. So right now, Montana looking clean in this overtime that you can tell that they've slowed down their offense a little bit and just focused on defense. And I think that's the right call. Absolutely. As the ball's played back in, here's going to be a shot. It is saved. That could have been the match, but it's played into the center. Oh, and he almost dropped it off to heads, but no touch. Heads so right here. going to take a shot. Ooh. Very close between these two teams. I will say one thing, the defense has absolutely stepped up. We were very worried about how the defense was gonna handle themselves in overtime, but as you can see, this doesn't even look like the same teams we saw during regulation. Both of well, them playing to their absolute shot. best. Could have been a shot on goal there by heads with the demo. Montana looking to pass this to the center and a mistouch, wow. I'm pretty much on the edge of my seat yet again here. I don't know what else we can add. At the moment, really, both Ooh. of these teams just playing to such a high level, not allowing shots to come through. And is the last one back here? Can Ramil get to this one? He will. He does. Oh, oh my, my goodness, word. he gets there. Oh, that was almost the end of the match right there. But right now, it looks like it might be an advantage. Pass to the center. No, it is cleared. My goodness, what a game. Paco's got to make a touch here, though. He's giving way too much time for everyone on Montana to set up here. And the shot coming through just barely off target. 
Now Montana are ready to start an offense here. What are they going to do? Absolutely. Let's see. Montana heads up in the air, double dribble, drops it off to his teammate, but a save by Yokel. What a game. Let's if go. We, if we get a flip reset to end this one, I might scream. We almost just had one out of heads, and it would have been incredibly impressive. But again, heads now back on offense. He's got one to beat in net. He gives it to Cogtray instead. Cogtray can't quite get to it. Montana, it looks like they're getting back into form here. I don't know about you, Jaren, but I'm getting very, very scared for Becker as they're spending more and more time in their own half. Absolutely. Need a massive clear right here. It looks like they will get it. Ball's in their end. Here's a shot on goal off the top. Heads there, able to clear it. Oh, no. Ball to the left. Taco oh. going to send this one back to the center. And again, we're seeing the overcommitment from Becker here. I'm getting nervous. That's the second one in a row that has popped over the head of their last defender. They've got to be careful. I understand that they want to get out of their own half and have an efficient offense. But if you break down the defense and don't and are not uh, effective enough at the midfield there, you're going to have a team like Montana just absolutely taking shot after shot and forcing you back into awkward positions. Absolutely. And we are three minutes into overtime. What a play. Ball centered over to the center. Ramil going to see what he does here. Ball touched. Two on one. And heads is the last one back. Has to be careful here. He needs to buy time for his team to get ready. Oh, and as Cogtrack chases for the demo, he's actually taking out the last defender. Taco has to step in here. And with the Four minutes into overtime, you also have to wonder what the mental fatigue is like for these teams. They've been playing for so long at such a high level here. It just takes one mistake, and this is all but over. Absolutely. Going to be on the lookout for that possible mistake. Like you said, this team right now just, I mean, we're at four minutes in overtime. Non-stop action. I mean, this has just been so back and forth. At this point, you kind of just got to wonder what is the goal that finishes off going to look like? Both teams have tried so many different shots, whether it be an aerial, aerials to dribbles, air dribbles to flip resets, passing plays, everything but the kitchen sink has been thrown here, and somehow none of it has stuck so far. Here's a shot. It is clear. They do have two men back. Taco misses that touch. <gasps> oh, no. It's a goal. Are you kidding me? Off the redirect, the mistouch in the midfield. It goes back, and the Grizzlies stand up and roar and win this match. And we knew it was coming. Unfortunately, Yokels has to be the one to do it. He goes for the 50. No 50 comes out because of the delayed shot, and the shot goes in without any contest. Very well played from both halves. Both teams putting on an incredibly impressive performance here. But Montana walking away with the sweep. I don't know. It, it, you could have given me a million guesses. I don't think I would have ever thought the sweep was coming. Wow. And and But it was so close. Besides that first game, it was such a close match back and forth. Wow. I mean, what a match. And what a night of Rocket League we have had. My goodness. I mean, I just got to thank you guys for letting me join in on today of all days. This is uh, this is about perfect. I don't think it could have gotten better. That was just ridiculous. The amount of back and forth between those two teams. I mean, they practically played an entire extra game in overtime. We basically had four games there. I mean, they really did put on the best effort that they could. But unfortunately for Becker today, Montana just came prepared to say the least. They just a volley of shots the whole time. Absolutely. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Montana, the Grizzlies will move to 4-0 and on this young NECC season. But if you're Becker College, you only fall to 3-1. and You're still at the top of your division. You've got to think that you know, hey, at 4-0 and and 3-1, and you have to know that at some point this season, you're going to see this Montana team again, and you better be prepared. Oh, yeah, Becker, if anything to take away from this game for Becker College, it's basically go, okay, here's where they got us beat. Here's where we had them beat. We need to improve in these X, Y, and Z places, and we will be back in even stronger team. Because like we said, I mean, Becker put on more than a performance there. There's no way you handle Montana for four minutes of overtime if you're not a prepared team. 
Right, 100%. Both teams playing extremely well. And we want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that five days a week you can catch collegiate esport action at the highest level right here at the NECC. Monday nights we have Madden, Tuesday night Valorant, Overwatch Wednesdays, League of Legends on Thursdays, and of course on Friday nights, Friday Night Live, we have Rocket League nonstop action all week. First of all, Oliver. Welcome to the NECC. <laughs> I greatly appreciate it, my friend. I mean, this has just been... T I can't ask for a better intro. Like I said, I mean, the matches today have just been incredible. A 3-0 sweep to start as well, but a 3-0 sweep of just some impressive performance from the teams. An extremely close game five, the last game. And here we have a sweep that really didn't feel like a sweep at all. Just super close the whole way throughout. Absolutely. Congratulations. I am looking in the Twitch chat. Congrats. And big thank you to all the Montana fans and the Becker fans coming in here. Uh, Blitz Falcon said, I lost 10 years off of my life watching this Rocket League action. All, all kinds of Grizzlies and hearts in the chat. Guys, do not forget. Please, if you are watching, you can follow us now. And you can follow us on social media at NECC Games. That's N-E-C-C -C Games on Twitter and Instagram. We have, we're going to have giveaways and all kinds of collegiate esports action all the time. Wow, what a night. Oliver, thank you so much for being here with me, my man. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Jaron. I mean, this was an absolute blast. I, Like I said, couldn't have asked for a better start. And uh, I hope that everybody in the audience enjoy that just about as much as we did because I, I don't know about you, but that was one of the most fun I've had casting in a while. That was just so back and forth there. Such impressive teams and so much fun to watch. Absolutely. And I feel like you had some good company in myself. I'm just going to let you know. <laughs> I think that we might have. That maybe <laughs> was a good cast. Maybe. Uh, just uh, maybe. Just a little bit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. We do want to remind you that myself and Oliver Bass are on Twitch. You can follow us both on Twitch at the Jaron Bell at bass from the past on twitch you check us out he's got rocket league action i have madden and fortnite action come check us out for sure but thank you for being here with us at the necc five days a week you can catch this gameplay we want to say one last thank you to our partners thank you to helix esports all the things they do behind the scenes to make all this possible thank you to estv our linear tv partner now available on samsung tv plus and the roku channel providing esports action 24-7 from around the globe on their platform. And of course, big thank you and a huge shout out to our newest partners, our friends at at HyperX. I almost said Helix twice. HyperX, the best gear in gaming, comes to the NECC. For our commissioner, Jacob Van Ryan, and our producer, producer we appreciate them for letting us do what we do our producer and executive director of esports caleb glooby in the studio tonight we thank him for having our backs and being so supportive and for you the twitch chat estv we thank you all this action we thank to the universities all the institution the coaches the directors we try to bring you collegiate action at the highest level and we could not have action like tonight without your support, without you hitting that follow button. Until next time, down there, that's Oliver Bass. My name is Jaron Bell. Until then, stay beautiful, stay blessed, GG's, and this is the NECC. College Esports lives here, and we'll see you next time.